Thing, the chill stream. We're gonna be doing Q and A today. Flying six tiny whoop batteries and chewing on human fingers. Uh, oh, oh. So go ahead in the chat, type at Teddy Spaghetti, and you can ask me anything. Don't ask my dad anything, cause he's a goddamn donkey. That won't let me chew on him. Arr! Thank you, buddy. Thanks for knocking everything down. Stop it! Stop it! Oh, God, he's freaking out now. Bring it down! Bring it down! Take it easy. Take it easy, please. Relax. Just, just... Come on now. Come on. Simmer. What's up, people? Uh, welcome to, I'm tired, man. I'm, 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 I'm exhausted. Um, not like lack of sleep exhausted. I'm just, I'm just exhausted. I'm, 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 I'm exhausted having mental illness, basically. I, I it just, it just, it never goes away. <laughs> it's like, you just have to, you just have it forever. And, uh, sometimes it's a bit much. And like just taking, you know, just like, oh, just take a break. Like it, it, that doesn't always work. Um, so, yeah, I'm just exhausted. Um, and I, I just I, I couldn't I couldn't think of like a, a topic for the stream. So um, we'll just we'll just hang out. Uh, hopefully that's OK. Uh, we'll do some Q&A for real. Like ask me anything, whatever. If you guys want to talk about like non FPV stuff, now's the time to do it. Um, Whatever you want, whatever you guys want. Cool. How's that sound? We don't. We, we do that every once in a while. Um, uh, so yeah, life stuff. Uh, whatever. Past hobbies, obsessions. Um, whatever. Whatever you guys want to know. Uh, I I I may choose to not answer, but you can ask me. You can ask me. Uh, yeah, I've been here for 42 years, so I've lived and I've lived many lives. Um, so yeah, ask me things, uh, for anybody that's new, I, uh, played drums early in life, took private lessons for many, many, many years, um, played airsoft. This is look at the creative juices flowing. Uh, went to, uh, college for TV radio slash film, uh, was heavily into airsoft for many, many years, still photography for many years, uh, motorsport for a long, long time. Uh, just like generally into car culture uh, for even longer than motorsport shenanigans. And 
and um, I do uh, I do work here and there as a grip on short films, typically, and uh, FPV stuff. So there you go. Ask me whatever you want, my friends. Brad Monin was first in chat. Frank Nicholas was next. Curtis Hayes, Cole Powers, David 4F, not applicable. Hockey Rounds, Denzel the Terrible, Mac FPV, Raging Leap, Kilo Zebra, it's Kevin Sumner, Lucky Tongue Out FPV, Denzel the Terrible, Ramada, Freelojo, Doubles FPV, Wake and Bake, or Wakanabe, Adam Weston, Ethan W, Lucky, uh, Douglas Otwell, Stephen Woodruff, Sleepy CBR, Northern Tier, CB FPV, Curtis Hayes, Scott FPV, OCD uh, FPV, Layman Board, Big Fran, Stephen Woodruff again, Lucky again, Denzel the Terrible, Cole Powers, Mac FPV again, 661, it's in the house, uh, Free Lojo, Layman Board, Drowning, Drowning Kittens FPV, every time, every time, what a horrifying name. Great Scott, Curtis Hayes, uh, Super Deluxe is in the house, what's up homie, uh, Johnny Then, Stephen Woodruff again, Curtis Hayes again, Johnny Then, uh, Don E is in the house, Kevin the Alien, uh, JP Gaming, Ant BBTHC, I think I got everybody, uh, Don E, was it you? It wasn't you, who was it? So on the on yesterday's live stream, I dumped a whole bunch of heat into a heat sink and expected the thermal paste to like stop thermal pasting. It's it's a heat sink for Christ's sakes. It the heat sink and the thermal paste are designed to get hot. So, of course, they're not going to want to let go. I mean, also, of course, like, they're going to let go. It was Tokyo Dom. Um, uh, yeah. I, I mean, you put enough heat into something. Like, I'm sure it's less um, it's less sticky when it gets hot, right? Uh, but I should have... I should have looked for a different way to do it. I mean, the, the only this is the only other way to do it, and this is how Tokyo Dom has done it a bunch, um, and it's worked fine. He says he takes a um, he takes an exacto knife, and he goes, ah, yeah, yeah. All right, hold on. This is it's. There's a visual here. There's a visual. Uh, he said this is the this is what works, and I, I didn't see anybody. Um, I didn't see anybody recommend this. Maybe somebody did. Uh, the main thing I think that's holding it on is this bead of thermal paste around the outside here. So what Tokyo Dom says actually does work with this is you sneak an X-Acto knife around the outside on all four sides to cut through the, uh, the outer bead of thermal paste the the problem is and and the reason that i would never have thought to do that is that on three sides of this thing there are components that are like all up on it and i i i, I mean i'm gonna try to never do this again but if if i do it again i'm gonna be terrified to to nick one of these components here uh because yeah, and like, look, like these components, these are higher than where this chip is. So like, I don't know, man, that seems nutty, but he's done a bunch of them uh, and I've done two, one of which is broken. <laughs> uh, the, the, this is the second one that I've done and I, I still need to wire it up, but I, I very well could have broken that one as well. So yeah. Uh, someone with way more uh, success in doing this um, has uh, has had has has had that work. So I'm gonna say like that's the way to do it. Don't don't expect to to pump pump a, a bunch of heat into it. Um, I mean, we did get it. Like it, it did eventually come off. Uh, and maybe I didn't ruin this one, but the previous one I did it on, I ruined. So yeah. 
There's your update to yesterday's stream. That was a that was a nightmare, man. Woo! We're doing mailbag today as well. I stole that from Mighty Car Mods. Uh, go subscribe to their channel. I sent them an email asking if I could use it. They didn't get back to me. They're a huge channel. Uh, newbie drone with a, a, a total surprise uh, box that just showed up. Uh, uh, very, very, very cool of them. Um, with just a whole bunch of frames that are going to be in giveaways for the next, like, forever. Look how cool their purple is. Unfortunately, this is the heavier plastic, um, but if you don't mind one extra gram, this is the coolest purple. In the world. We got there. Uh, yeah, I, I, I wish that this was the, uh, was the lighter material. Uh, but yeah, if you don't care, care about one extra gram, or if you want more durability, the, the, the heavier frames are more durable. Um, for the love of God, get the purple. Uh, so, so, so cool. Uh, bunch of fun stuff in here. So, uh, the frames that I'll be giving away will come with the carbon fiber braces. I don't think you should use this, but you're going to have it. Um, you're going to get it. So, yeah, that'll be cool. Uh, can't show you that. Can't show you that, I think. I got to I gotta reread the note uh, that Kelvin left me here. Uh, but I think there's some secret squirrel shit up in here. Uh, of which that sort of is. But look at this, yo. L look at, look at, just so cool, man. So effing cool. Hold on, I, I would love... Where'd the note go? I would love to, uh, to show you this thing. I'm pretty sure that... What happened here? What? Oh, there it is. Uh... uh... Okay, yeah, 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 try it. We're not really promoting it yet. Try it out and let me know. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I can't show you that, uh, but it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I'm, I'm not like freaking out about it, but it, it's cool. It's cool. Look at this, yo. Look how, look how cool this is. Look how cool that is, man. Uh, amazing. Thank you so much, newbie drone. Extremely generous. Um, you know, this is the kind of stuff that Let's those of us that are trying to do the hard thing that is uh, making content on YouTube for a, a small, super niche group uh, able to do it. Uh, support like this from from vendors that appreciate the feedback that we give them. Um, and yeah, that's that's amazing. So thank you, Movie Drone. Very, very cool. Uh, I did. <laughs> What's really funny is I just recently did an order with like six of these frames to swap a bunch of my rigs over. Um, so yeah, literally all of these will be going into giveaways <laughs> because I have, um, I ordered six and I only really needed three. So I have three extras. So yeah, these are absolutely all going into uh, giveaways over the next um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve months for the next year. Uh, there will be a uh, cockroach sixty-five V three frame in every single giveaway that that I do for the next twelve months, uh, thanks to Newbie Drones' awesomeness. So yeah, uh, if you don't know, Newbie Drones' website has more than just Tiny Whoop stuff, uh, and. They also sell a bunch of stuff that, like, you kind of can't get anywhere else. Like, they have a couple of Axis motors, like the 1404, um, that, yeah, you literally cannot get anywhere else. Maybe, like, Banggood, but, you know, if, if you're stateside, you've probably stopped ordering from Banggood by now. Um, lucky us, because we've got four huge uh, shops uh, with great selections of parts. Newbie Drone. Um, get FPV, Pyro Drone, Race Day Quads. Uh, so, yeah, definitely spend some time on Newbie Drone's website, website just kind of surfing around. 
Um, if you like Axis Motors, definitely search their website for Axis Motors because they're, they're going to have sizes of motors that you didn't even know existed because nobody else is selling them. Um, so yeah, check them out. Uh, support the people that support the people that make the content that you watch on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so yeah, that was a that was a, a total surprise. That was really, really, really cool. Ramada says, this isn't the real Quaid. Hey, if you want to talk to me in the chat, all you got to do is type CIDFPV. If you do that, it'll light up an orange. If You, you can do that with each other, too. If you type RA space MA space DA for Ramada, his name will light up an orange and he'll know that you're talking to him and away you go. So type each other's names uh, if you want to get somebody's attention. You don't have to put an at in front of it, but you can if you're on desktop. It'll, it'll, when you start to type the first few letters, it'll suggest it. Doubles FPV says, What's up, everyone? Uh, CID's intro jam gets me pumped for some whooping. I've got packs uh, ready to go. You and me both, man. We're, we're doing uh, six batteries tonight for absolute sure. We didn't do them yesterday. I felt like an idiot at the end of the stream. I, I completely forgot, but that happens sometimes. Layman Board says, Hey, what's up? Stephen Woodruff says, Bex Best box goggles after EV800D. Oh, boy, I have no idea. My guess would be that the Fat Shark, the OG Fat Shark box goggles are the best. Um, they, uh, one of the really cool things about them is that you can pop the front screen out and use it as a monitor. And like the fact that there are box goggles that don't allow you to do that is kind of insane because like, it's really nice to have a monitor and like the front of box goggles is a fucking monitor. <laughs> like all box goggles are is a monitor with a housing on them. So like, why would they not put latches in? It, it's kind of wild. I mean, on top of that, Fat Shark just makes incredible analog goggles. So yeah, you kind of can't go wrong. That, that would be my guess, but don't quote me on that. I, I have not um, had box goggles in six and a half years. Uh, so yeah, and, and I've not really paid attention to box goggles in that time. Uh, so there could be something else out there that's amazing. Anybody in chat know of the hottest box goggles? I want to say that the Fat Sharks are called Scouts, but again, don't quote me on that. Uh, but yeah, Fat Shark makes a box goggle and that's probably going to be the best one. Almost certainly going to be the best one. Uh... I spent... Like, I spent an entire hour, I, I gave myself one hour today uh, to research the error message that I would get when I would try to uh, log into Facebook after they erroneously kicked me out off. Um, and, of course, there's a whole bunch of Reddit posts. And hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people posting the same thing and replying to posts. Um, not one of which uh like i'm sure someone in there got their account back but not one single person went back into the reddit post and said like yes i got my account back not one when when i um when i got hacked last year and i was posting about that error message there were a bunch of people that figured it out um and one of the things that that one of the people had said was that they got some generic email from Facebook after they got hacked with like what looked like a decent address, like not, you know, like no reply at Facebook is the worst website ever.com. Um, and what they said that they did was just hammer that email address. They, they said they would um, first thing in the morning, every single day, they would email that email address um, because what they sort of realized or found out or something like that was that, um, it's, you know, a million people email that a day and there are people that work there on it and, and they go through as many of the emails as they can every day and then delete them because it's it's just infinite, right? And then the next day they do it again. They I guess they kind of have to do that, right? If they didn't do that, it would just pile up and they would be handling emails from years ago. Um, so I remembered that thing that I'd read and when, when they kicked me this time, uh, they sent an email that said, like, we've banned your account um, for copyright infringement. If you think this was done in error, uh, reply just reply back to this email. You'll be fine. We'll manually review it. I'm like, yeah, right. Um, so I've been doing that every single day, sometimes twice a day. 
um, I've been just copying and pasting the same email to that email address every single day, every day, every day, every day, as early as I can, over and over and over and over and over again. My account, you know, my account has been disabled in air. I don't post any content on Facebook. I only share links to other people's content and use Messenger for my business, which is now suffering greatly. Please help. Over and over and over and over and over again, I sent this. Um, I spent like this hour today reading, 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 not finding a single person. And like, <laughs> there were so there were so many people in these Reddit threads that were like, you know, Facebook hammered me to, to, to use their advertising and I did and it worked and I built my entire business on their platform. And now it's all gone, all gone. Like this is my career. My career is running a business on Facebook and they have banned me for no reason and it's all over. And, and, um, what's the, it's 90 days, 90 days go by and then they delete the, the entire account and there would be people that would be in there and, and they would be like pretty much counting down and then they would get to the, to that last day and then they would post. Yep. It's gone. It's all gone. My entire business is gone. Um, so first and foremost, if you have a business on Facebook or are ever thinking about doing anything business related on Facebook for the love of God, don't. And if you're on there now doing anything business related, send a form message to every single person that you have a converse. I'm going to have to do this. Send a, a, a message to every single person that you've ever spoken with on there saying, Hey, I'm not using Facebook anymore. They're banning people for whatever. Like I'm not using Facebook anymore. Please contact me via email, text, Instagram, whatever, anywhere other than Facebook. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's just like, oh my God, man. What, a, what, a, what a disaster. What a disaster, man. Like this is, you know, this is why we have anti-monopoly laws, right? Like when, when, when companies get this big, there's no reason for them to care about anyone at all. As long as they're still generating revenue, right? There's no, they don't have a single reason and they're, uh, it shouldn't, uh, you know, they're allowed to do that. They're, they're allowed to be awful. Um, <laughs> but an hour ago, uh, they replied back to my email. <laughs> Sasha replied back to my email and said, we previously removed your Facebook account because our terms and service prohibit content content that infringes or goes against someone else's intellectual property rights and otherwise goes against the law. After further review, we've restored your Facebook account at this time. Um, you may want to review our uh, remove, re review your account for any content that, that, you know, they obviously completely ignored everything that I said. Um, and, and just, you know, here's a link to our help center. Uh, so yeah, it's been, uh, I think it's been about three weeks. I, I, I've been I've been sending that form message every single day for about three weeks, I think. Um, and yeah, unbelievably, it worked. <laughs> uh, but I, I will never use that website again. Uh, I, I will be sending a message to everybody that I've ever talked to, um, redirecting them to my website and saying, like, here's all my contact info. Um, here's where you can actually speak with me. Um, and I'll probably figure out a way to get in there. Like I suggest that you get off Facebook as well, because it's only a matter of time before they ban you. And I might even like throw in a link to one or two of the Reddit posts with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people that are just like, I, I got banned for absolutely no reason. Um, so yeah, that was a unexpected thing. Um, I, you know, I, it, on one hand, I'm just so horrified, like just, just reading like how many people lost so much, you know what I mean? Like, like, like it's, it's a website that like we've, we've had for so long and like, it's been such a cool place to, to post stuff and meet people and, and have like memories. And like, you know, I, I love like having the Facebook memories thing pop up every day and being able to like, see, you know, what, what, did I, what I said 12 years ago, like, that's really cool. Um, and it, and and ju it's just it's just so maddening that that I don't know I I mean I I guess like what are they gonna do they're so big that like and and they have to you know they have to protect against awful stuff and.
there are a lot of awful people doing awful stuff. So like on that side, I, I get it. They have to, and, and they can't possibly employ enough people to fight all of the awful human beings that walk around. Um, but they certainly should not have a pro a process in place that kicks people for seemingly no reason whatsoever. The, the kicking, you know, like like the way that it's set up now is is not the answer. <laughs> so you know, until they change that, I I can't I can't use it at all. I I, I can't do anything on the site, I, and I refuse to spend any time on there whatsoever. Um, so yeah, and, and hopefully by not using the site at all, um, I won't get banned again. And, and then if, if I need it, it's there, right? Like if I need to look up an old conversation, um, or an old contact, uh, in theory, it will be there. Although I'm sure that at some point I'll get hacked again and they'll start posting awful shit and, and it, it will end up getting banned again, but like not using it, you know, I, I have all the, I, after I eventually, after God, like a month, a month plus, uh, got my account back last year when I got hacked, um, I did all of the security stuff, uh, that they offer. And so, but you know, that stuff only lasts a couple of years before it's Christ. It's, it's, it's probably all of those measures are probably all old and, and useless already. Um, after a year. So, yeah. But, uh, you know, the best I can do is just to not have, not let them see me log in, not let them see me do a single thing, right? Like, if I haven't logged in, you can't, you can't ban me for, for posting copyrighted material because I haven't logged in to post copyrighted material, you psychopaths. Gutter cleaners called the other day and they're like, hey, yeah, we, we, we came out for a second time and we tried to remove those gutter guards that are causing the problem, but they're glued down to your roof. You're going to have to have a roofer come out and it's going to get wild. So there's that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're in it now. Ooh, woosa, motherfuckers. Woosa. Just, just keep swimming. Just keep fucking swimming. Free Lojo says, uh, how would you find track days in the Pacific Northwest? Uh, look for a... <laughs> look for a facebook group uh what type in whatever state you're in with scca uh type in whatever state you're in with nasa they're not that nasa um national auto sports association scca sports car club of america and national auto sport association nasa uh, those are the two biggest groups here in the U.S. Um, and there will be a local chapter, uh, either certainly in your state, uh, maybe even in your uh, closest big city. Um, and that's it. You just need to get to, you just need to get into that Facebook group and then ask that exact question right there. And there will be a dozen people that are like, dude, cool. Uh, here's where I run. Here's, here's the different tracks, blah, 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 blah. Alternatively, you can just search Google for like racetracks in so-and-so city, and that'll come up with a bunch of the racetracks, get to their websites. Um, and they'll, they'll lead you down the path. Um, and, uh, yeah, don't build the hell out of your car. Uh, leave your car the way it is, put aggressive brake pads on it talk to these guys that are that are in those groups uh or find a group for your specific car um with like yeah find a specific group for your car and there will be people that actually drive them in anger um and ask them what a good uh, uh brake pad compound is for track days it, it's basically going to be like so there's going to be all right, so like Hawk, for example, right? Hawk is a company that makes brake pads. They have like a street pad, which is the HP, 
They have a slightly more aggressive street pad, which is the HP plus, and then they have racing pads. And that first level of racing pad, they're also gonna have a ceramic pad that doesn't make dust that you don't want. That's like the most street friendly pad. Um, so there'll be a ceramic, there'll be a street friendly, and then there'll be aggressive street friendly. Um, and then there will be their racing pads. And the racing pads are rated in temperature ranges and you want the lowest temperature range. The problem with race pads is they do not work when they're cold. I mean, they work, but they don't work well when they're cold. So driving on the street with a race pad is a little sketchy because if somebody jumps in front of you and there's no heat in the brake pads and you stand on the brakes, it might not grab hard enough to lock the wheels, which is what you want. Because if it's not grabbing hard enough to lock the wheels, it's not braking the car as hard as it possibly will. Um, race brake pads need to come up to temperature before they start to bite. Um, so you can usually get away with, with, with it with the lowest temperature compound, um, but it's still a little bit sketchy and, and you don't want to do it anyway. It, it, race brakes are also hard on rotors. There's no reason to run them in the streets, bad idea. Um, but yeah, race brake pads are an absolute necessity. Um, uh, high temp uh, fluid, brake fluid is also a necessity. When you're, when you're changing the pads, flush the fluid. Um, I have not paid attention to what the hot new fluid is, but just type into Google like best uh, brake fluid for track days and there'll be tons of info. Or here on YouTube, there'll probably be tests here on YouTube. Um, you're look, You're probably gonna look for something that's like dot five is, is what I remember. But it, it, yeah, you'll figure that out pretty quickly. Um, those are the two absolute essentials. You cannot not do those things. If you do, you will have a shitty track day. You will pay hundreds of dollars and then you will boil the brakes in one or two laps and then you'll spend half the track day waiting for the brakes to cool down in paddock. Um, those are the two absolute essential things to have to be able to stay out on track for a while. Um, depending on the power level of the car and who it's made by, you might also need to look into cooling. Um, that's what you can hopefully link up with some people with the exact same car um, and ask them about that, that have done track days. Uh, for example, like Mazda, Mazda builds their cars to be driven hard. So most Mazdas you can run all day long at a track day with pads and fluid and just have an absolute blast and you won't have any issues. Um, Hondas, it depends. Certain Hondas you can, certain ones you can't. Um, American cars, forget it. They're going to overheat for sure. So you need to look at um, a bigger... I mean, any aftermarket radiator that you get is going to be bigger than stock. Um, you can also do stuff like pulling the air conditioning compressor. The, the air conditioning radiator sits either right in front or right behind um, the actual radiator and it, and it really makes the actual radiator work a lot worse. So you can pull your air conditioning and that'll get you a lot better cooling. Um, sucks not having air conditioning though. Uh, and you can't just pull the rad. Like you gotta, you gotta, there's more to it. Pulling the air conditioning is a whole big thing. Saves a bunch of weight though off the nose of the car. Um, uh, Subarus fucking forget it. Don't even think of tracking a Subaru without beefing up the shit out of the cooling system. Um, yeah, link up with, with people with the same car that have done track days and, and, and ask them and they'll, they'll have a list of things. Um, don't do coilovers. Don't do sway bars. Don't do tires. Don't do wheels. Don't do a supercharger. Don't put a bigger turbo. Don't do any of that shit. All that stuff is going to do is make your car harder to drive and make you have a worse time at the track day. You're new. You're going to suck. Embrace the suck. Just like it's, it's, you're there to learn. You're not there to win. Track days are not about winning. They're, they will never be about winning. They're about bettering yourself and learning car control. Um, so yeah, the stuff that makes your car go faster, you don't want up front. You want to make the car reliable first, and then you want to learn how to drive. And that takes a while. And then a year later, you can start building the car. When you reach the limits of the car and the car feels boring to you because you've gotten so good, that's when you want to start to make the car faster. For the love of God, don't start throwing parts at the car that aren't meant for reliability uh, yet. It is it is literally the worst thing that you can do. When you make a car faster, it is harder to drive, and that makes your job as a student trying to learn to get better more difficult. Leave it alone and 
figure out what reliability stuff you need to do to get the damn thing to run full throttle, right? Like the idea is to be flat to the floor on the gas pedal and then flat to the floor on the brake pedal and then flat to the floor in the gas pedal. And you do that for 20 minutes straight, that's a, that is a lot of abuse. So you, you, you gotta like, yeah. And if you've already thrown mods at the car, you've already made it, especially like power adding mods, intake exhaust, even like subtle stuff. You've made the situation worse. The car is making more power and more power is more heat. Um, so yeah, it's all about reliability. If you want to have a good time, if you want to try to be the, the track day asshole that shows up and like, oh, I'm going to beat you. I'm going to beat you guys. Well then by all means put tires first. Uh, but everybody hates that guy. And so don't be that guy. And you know, that guy has a shittier time. There you go, my friend. Good luck. Track days are, are pretty brutal. Um, Here's the other thing that I will say, uh, and the reason that I never really dove into track days with my own car. Have another car. Um, going to a track day, you have to expect 100% that that car is not coming home with you, or that if it comes home, it's coming home on a wrecker. Um, and it's it might not be your fault. Uh, a tire goes down, a suspension component breaks, some other asshole's brakes let go that didn't beef up his, his braking system and put a supercharger on, comes bat blasting ass down the front straight and rails into you because he doesn't know what the hell he's doing. There are so many things that can happen to wreck your car. You'll be fine. Nobody dies at track days. Um, but you have to expect every single track day that your car will not come home. Um, I have so many friends that that have played that game and and it doesn't you know the, and there's like the whole there's the, like the running joke and it happens all the time what, because like insurance doesn't cover if you wreck the car at the track day um so it's crazy so many accidents happen on the road right out in front of these racetracks it's it's nuts I don't know how and there's like there's tire marks down the sides of all these cars it's weird there's no there's no tire tire barriers on the roads it's strange how that happens so often, um, but you're you, you don't have a car, right? So like, you re you need to have like if you live alone and it's your only car, wait, buy a beater, so that you can get to work the next day, um, because yeah, the the insurance companies are wise to it and they very well might not cover you and just not being covered on a car that bangs into a concrete barrier at 60, 70, 80 miles an hour. That's 10 grand in damage like that um, minimum. So yeah, uh, have another form of transportation. At the very least, have someone that you can borrow their car to get to work for the next week or two. Um, but yeah, it's important to realize that. Like there is, I'm not gonna say a good chance, but there's way more of a chance that your car is not coming home from a track day than any other time that you've gotten in your car and left the house. Um, so just expect that. And, and it's usually equipment failures um, that, that do it. It's typically brakes. It, it, it's typically brake, flu uh, brake fluid boiling or pads just, um, yeah, not being up to the task. And you come barrel assing down the front or back straight into the hardest braking corner on the racetrack. And the brake pedal goes to the floor. And away we go into hopefully tire barriers, which still hit hard. Um, some racetracks though, it's, you're going into concrete, but you'll be okay, which is the nice part. Cars are very safe. Uh, Cole Power says, this is a dramatic improvement over the usual presentation in reference to Teddy Spaghetti hosting the live stream. Uh, Free Lojo dropping the Patreon link. Thank you, dude. Curtis Hayes says, uh, hey, this is my full-time job. CIDFPV.com has a million ways you can support me. Patreon's the best, uh, but anything you do helps. Click thumbs up, uh, subscribe to the stream, do the bell thing. Uh, use my affiliate links. That's a, a, a super free way that generates actual dollar dollar bills. Uh, yeah, lots of ways you can support me so I can keep doing this. Uh, Curtis Hayes says, love my HD zero goggles, but sometimes a Mac won't recognize the SD card and sometimes it will. Have you seen that since uh, getting your goggles? No, I've had no problems with that. Interesting. Um, I do have the, the previous owner of these goggles did set the files to be .ts, which is transport stream, which I hadn't heard of before. Um, it seems to work fine. I'm assuming that 
Um, he did it for good reason. So I've just left it. I don't know. Maybe that'll help. Uh, but the, the computer not recognizing the SD card, that shouldn't have anything to do with the format of the files. That's weird, man. I'll, I'll, if it happens, I'll let you know. Uh, speaking of HD zero goggles, what was I going to say? Uh, shit. Um, I forget. Uh, I, it was it was a thing. It was a thing. It was a good thing to say. Ah, fart bag, bastard. Maybe if I look around, I'll remember. Nope. Don't remember. I'll remember it. I won't. Six six one FVV says, "Hope all is well." The new tooth store. Uh, 2S charger is now available at Tiny Whoop. Just picked one up for uh, some BT 3.0 stuff. Uh, sweet. That is the um, the Vifly Whoopster, but set up for 2S, uh, which is super cool. So if you're going down the 2S uh, BT 3.0 route, there's a charger that'll be totally plug and play. That's awesome. Drowning Kid says, uh, Drowning Kittens rather, says, you have kids? That is nuts. Uh, they are Maggie's kids, but, you know, Maggie is my partner, and I don't plan on going anywhere. Uh, so, yeah, they're my kids by proxy, um, and it's awesome. It, it's uh, it's a lot. It, it's a huge responsibility, uh, and it's it's confusing and, and crazy. But what an opportunity to help the lives of, of young people that are going to be my age someday and hopefully uh, a little bit better adjusted than me. Um, so yeah, uh, what a what an incredible opportunity that uh, I constantly wonder if I'm actually up to and, <laughs> but I don't know, Maggie says that um, I'm doing good. I, I certainly don't think so, but I, I think that about everything. You know, I think I'm, <laughs> my brain always goes to you suck and I, I hate myself and all that awful shit that uh, mental illness tends to, uh, erroneously convince you of um so yeah it's crazy mac fpv uh before you ask 13 and 17 uh mac fpv says been working on throttle control the last few months and your advice has helped my flying so much thanks bud uh very cool mac i, I appreciate you you tell me that um yeah that feedback actually helps me quite a bit right like without that feedback uh, every once in a while i'll wonder like am, am i explaining it right am, am you know is 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 what I'm preaching falling on deaf ears. Um, so yeah, thank you for, for mentioning that, man. That, that that helps a ton, more than you know. OCD FPV says, uh, what's the meaning of life? Uh, have fun and don't negatively affect anyone else, uh, if, if at all possible. Um, that's it for me, man. Like, I guess I could also rope in, like, try to do something good. Try to try to make a difference. Try to, you know, try to not just be like, look, I, I'm I'm totally cool with people being right down the middle and and not making a difference and just not hurting other people, right? Um, but like, if you have a little bit more in you, um, than that, uh, yeah, go a step further and and try to do something that that helps the world, make somebody else smile, spread some knowledge. Um, that's it for me, man. Simple as possible. Biggest thing, though, to be honest, just just to not not negatively impact other people, especially not other gigantic groups of people. Right? Um, that is just that's just atrocious to me. And and there's just so many people that that fall into that camp, and and it's it's just mind blowing. And and it, 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 yeah, I can't like, I, I, I can't watch the news at all anymore. I just can't. Um, my, my mental health will just not allow me to. Um, and I, yeah, I have to cut a lot of people out of my life. I've, I've had to cut a lot of otherwise sort of good, I guess, people out of my life, but they, they just have these broken values that negatively impact massive groups of people and I, I just I can't have it like I, I can't overlook that um and that's a failing on my part I guess but I'm fine with that I'm I'm fine with not being able to overlook you know 
otherwise good people uh, not waking up and 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 being yeah awful towards <laughs> yeah you guys know what I mean uh, that's it that's it for me man just spread the love don't spread the hate uh, unless it's warranted. Stephen Woodruff says, opinion on Sony Alpha 6200 mirrorless camera. I have not kept up with, um, I have not kept up with camera stuff. It's kind of insane. Uh, I'm still very old school, like DSLR. Is this the new global shutter? Sony? Sony. I also don't know shit about Sony's. Uh, I'm a ca I've been a Canon guy forever. Uh, Sony Alpha 6200. No, this is not the global shutter. There's a, a really exciting new Sony camera um, that has global shutter, uh, which <sighs> global shutter basically exposes the entire sensor at this like all at once rather than like rolling shutter for example that exposes it top to bottom rolling shutter is where you get jello when you have vibrations because as the camera vibrates it's exposing the sensor top to bottom so it's going to vibrate and it's going to it, it's going to do this little jello thing um global shutter it's it's more like on and off on and off on and off so if there's vibrations, it's going to open. You can think of a camera like this. The camera is, is always like this. You push the shutter button, it goes like that. You turn it on to video mode, it goes like this. 30 times a second or 60 times a second or whatever. And then the shutter speed, one. so like a shutter speed of 1 over 30, 1 30th of a second. If you have, if you have the frame rate set to 30 times a second, so it's capturing 30 frames a second. If you have one over 30 for the shutter speed, it's going to leave the shutter opened, its eyes open for a 30th of a second. Well, if it's doing 30 frames a second, it's going to just close its eyes instantaneously and open them back up, right? If you set the shutter to 1 60th of a second, it's going to open its eyes for 1 60th, close them for 1 60th, open them back up for 1 60th, close them again because it's 30 frames a second, right? Um, and so... When it opens its eyes with a global shutter, it exposes the whole thing. So if there's vibrations, it's going to open its eyes and there's going to be those vibrations. So it's going to be fuzzy, but it's not going to be jello-y. It's just going to be blurry from the vibrations, right? You close your, like if you shake your head and open your eyes real quick, when you open your eyes, the, the whole world is kind of blurry. That's what, what you would get um, with a global shutter versus a rolling shutter. You don't get that. You get this weird shit because like rolling shutter would be like, like if you keep your eyes opened, but you only open a little slit and you do this really fast. So then if you shake your head and you do this, you won't be able to notice, but it, it would it would have this wavy jello effect. Um, and so, yeah, global shutter has, has been like the holy grail. Um, and now there is a, a consumer level camera that has it, which is super exciting. Of course, it's incredibly expensive but what's cool is that shit will trickle down um and before too long there will be smaller lighter weight global shutter um cameras that we can run on our stuff and jello will become a lot less of an issue uh which is pretty rad uh, i thought maybe that's the one you were talking about uh yeah i don't know anything I, I'm, I'm looking at the sony alpha 6400 here uh i've heard really good things about uh, a lot of these mirrorless sony cameras um so it's probably really good, but yeah, I have no idea. Uh, if you type Sony Alpha A6400 into YouTube, there'll be a shitload of super qualified people reviewing them. Um, and yeah, I base it off that. Uh, the the A couple of the folks that I trust are the Northrops, although I don't think uh, uh, Tony and, um, I forget his wife's name, although they don't usually do gear reviews. Uh, Fro knows photo. I, I can't fucking stand the guy's face or voice or attitude but he does a hell of a job um uh with his reviews and then oh, who's the, the third one is um he's absolutely hysterical uh and he's he's bounced around uh, uh kai k-a-i but you can't find him under kai anymore uh Damn it. 
Wow, that is creepy. Look at this. I searched for Sony Alpha 6200. Look at this. Ready? This is this is creepy. Ready? Ready for it? Oh, that's weird. Oh, that's weird. I don't like... Oh, oh wait, never mind. Okay, it's not finding that because of that. I thought that it was already um, indexing the, the search, but it's not. This is, this is not search related. <laughs> this section is. Okay, yeah. Um, hold on. Uh, what's Kai? Uh, Kai camera reviewer. That'll probably find it. Uh, it is under Kai. There it is. Uh, Kai Man Wong. But he is now under Kai W. He used to be under, uh, a different channel. But yeah, it looks like he's doing everything under Kai W. Uh, you guys should all subscribe to Kai. He's absolutely hysterical. He is, I'm putting the link in the, uh, in the chat. Uh, he is the Jeremy Clarkson of, uh, of camera reviewers. He, he's just hysterical. Let me make sure. Yeah, four days ago. Yep, yeah, this is his current channel. It, it's awesome. Subscribe to this guy. Even if you're not super into cameras, if you're even remotely into cameras, um, Kai will will make you laugh. Great channel. Really, really, really funny guy. Uh, Curtis Hayes says, I keep breaking my camera canopies on my tiny whoops when I when I grab them to put the battery on. Really? Are they really that weak? Cockroach frames goober camera mount. Um, the goober camera mount, it's weird, man. Like, I have hammered the shit out of it, and it's been completely fine. And then I've had, like, weird little crashes that have broken it. It's a very brittle plastic. So my guess is going to be that it's cold and that it's getting... Jackalope, thank you for the five bucks. I'm going to read your comment in a second. Um, I'm guessing that it's cold and you're you're grabbing it a little bit too hard. I've not, I mean, I've certainly heard of people complaining about the Goober camera mounts, um, but I, I never consider them to be that weak. The Those Goober camera mounts are what I run on the tiny lifters, and that camera mount has to hold that 26 gram um, Insta360 Go up really high, and I've crashed them a bunch, and the, the Goober camera mount has not broken. Um, so... I, I can't call it fragile. It's just like every once in a while, it, or I think it's also like if you put pressure on it in the exact wrong direction, it'll just let go. Um, so yeah, they're also kind of heavy. So this is your sign to move over to something else. Easiest thing would be go to go to a uh, McStinky. They, they make a McStinky mount for the BI camera. Um, you'll never break one of those because they're printed in TPU. Uh, if you have a 3D printer, you just go on Thingiverse. Go, go to cadiapv.com. I have a Thingiverse link. The McStinky is in there. Um, if you don't have a 3D printer and you don't have somebody local or a buddy that's willing to do it and mail it to you, um, I have a ton of the McStinkies here. I'll sell them to you for the cost of shipping. I have them in purple and red. Uh, message me and, and we'll figure it out. Uh, your other option, Curtis, is to move over to the damn near invincible uh, Mobula 6, old school Mobula 6 canopy, which you can still get. Um, you're going to have to change cameras, though. Uh, you're going to have to move over to a Runcam Nano 3. What would be cool about doing this is the camera and canopy are going to be significantly lighter than what you've got now. So your rig is going to literally fly better uh, by switching over to the Mobula 6 camera, uh, canopy and Runcam Nano 3 camera. Uh, so, and that's actually what I would recommend. I have all my rigs other than one that I'm doing like long-term testing of the McStinky mount, um, on these canopies. And I might actually switch that one over once I get, uh, some more run cam nano threes. Uh, Kevin, the alien says, I know rates are very personal, but do you have any tips for finding ideal rates? Um, yeah, change them one at a time. Uh, so you need to be on actual rates. If you're not on actual rates, that's the main thing. Get over onto actual rates. And then take your center, the, the first column, the center stick sensitivity, move it all the way down, fly it, move it up a bunch, fly it, put it in the middle somewhere, fly it. Um, try to figure out where you like it the best. Set it to wherever you like it the best. Move to the second number, uh, the second set of values, which is the, the maximum rotational rate. Um, Fly it where it is, move it down a bunch, move it up a bunch, see where you like it the best. Set it there, leave it. 
Then you go to Expo, same thing. And then you go back and you do it all over again. You get each one of them where you think you like it best individually and you change all three axes at once. Don't just change roll. Don't just change pitch. Don't run a different yaw rate than roll and pitch in my opinion. Some people love it, but I think it's a bad idea. Um, yeah, go through them and then go back. Um, and then go back through them a second time and then leave it for a while. Fly a whole bunch of batteries. Fly like 100, 200 batteries so that you really get used to it and then go back in and do it again. Um, if you do that little cycle two, maybe three times, like do it initially, like tonight or whatever, and then revisit it in a month from now, a couple of weeks from now, depends on how, how many batteries you're flying a day. Um, if you do it now and you do it one more time and then you do it one more time after that, you'll be good to go. Because like you change and the, the way that you fly changes um, and the rates have a lot to do with that. So that's kind of the other thing. Like if you find yourself at some point, like I want to fly more cinematic now, revisit your rates. Um, if you just want to change the way that your flight footage looks or f the way you're flying feels or just the way that you fly, like you're bored with the way you're flying, um, rates have a big part in that. Um, and that's a great time to go back in and, and screw around with them. But the big thing is to do them one at a time and to make relatively drastic changes. Like, I'm telling you, center stick sensitivity go all the way down, uh, which is going to be a value of 10, I think, and then go up to like 100 and then go up to 200. You, you just you you want to and you can do this in the OSD, right? Fly it for 10 seconds, land it, go into the OSD, navigate over to the to the rates, uh, push them, push all three of them up a bunch for y'all pitch and roll on center. Uh, and just fly it for another 15, 20 seconds. You, 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 you want to drive into your head what each one of them does and doesn't do. Um, and that makes finding the right number for you a lot easier. Um, what you don't want is like you change it from 10 to 50. You fly it and you're like, oh, I think I can kind of see the difference here. No, 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 no. Like keep going. If you think you kind of see the difference, double it. Um, and then you'll definitely feel and see the difference. Um, you need to make big enough changes where it's obvious, not big enough, not changes so big that it's unflyable. Although if you do that, you'll be like, Oh, I see what this does. Right. So it does have some value, but yeah. Um, make a significant change to where you can obviously feel that change. Even if you don't like it, give it a chance, give it half a battery at least, and then swap it. Um, and yeah, get them set and then leave them. Don't keep screwing with the rates for day after day after day after day after day. Like knock it out in one big chunk and then just leave them and fly it so that you can get used to them. You can ha you can just randomize those numbers and after 100 batteries, you'll get used to it. You could have the rates all over the goddamn place. You will adapt. Um, it won't help you fly better, but you will adapt. So if you get them set into a place that you think maybe they're kind of good and then you start adapting to it, that's that's the move. And then when you go back and revisit it, you'll have a better understanding. You'll have adapted to where they were um, and you can more kind of fine tune them. Um, the other thing I want you guys to understand, though, is that the PIDs have more to, have more to do with the way the rig is going to respond than you would think. Um, an aggressive PID tune. So when you're quick on the sticks and you like flick any stick out to the outside of the stick travel, um, your PIDs have more of an effect on how quickly it responds than your actual rates. Once you get the stick all the way out into the plastic, the constant, the, the speed of the constant rotation is 100% your rates. But when you push the stick over, the PIDs basically activate. When you push the stick over, that's error. And the PIDs are there to correct error. The PIDs are error correction, right? Remember that? We don't want to think of them as PIDs anymore because PID doesn't mean shit to anybody but engineers. The PIDs are error correction. They are fixing air. Wind hits it. That's air. It's going to fix that. It's going to push against the wind. You push the sticks. The quad is still here. You push the sticks. 
you're telling it like go this way it's not there yet it's still here so it's going to have to correct that error and the more aggressive your pids are the quicker it's going to correct that error feed forward kind of changes this a little bit feed forward is not error based it sees that it sees you push the stick and it pushes before the pids jump in but when you move the sliders around specifically the master multiplier slider that pushes the feet forward up and down um and so these are kind of tied together for 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 all intents and purposes not intensive purposes that doesn't make any sense there are no intensive purposes that's a crazy thing to say out loud for all intents and purposes um the more aggressive your pid tune is, the snappier the attack will be when you when you move the sticks um, around. So that's not rates. If you jam the sticks into the corner and your quad lazily um, gets go like 75 versus 65, perfect example, right? 65 millimeter rig. You hammer the stick as quick as you can to roll right. It uh, it's just there, instant, quick, snappy, like on it. 75 millimeter rigs i have never been able to get them anywhere close to 65 until i did these 0802 33 000 kv motors this is the first time there was a anywhere near the amount of authority is the word that that has been that steel used way back when and like weirdly makes sense um although i think they use authority in the um in the aircraft community uh which is in theory where that came from um yeah that's pids yo that, that that's why on the 75 millimeter rig i push the fucking p i and d gains way over to try to make up for some of that uh sloppiness and 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 slowness that it has when you when you crank the sticks over um so yeah there's more of a relationship between pids and rates than you would think and it's not actually a, a relationship it's just that in our heads right like the way the rig flies it is 99% rates, uh, but that initial movement, that, that initial attack um, is actually the PIDs and, and a more aggressive. So what can happen is if, if you set your rates perfectly and you get used to, for example, doing a split S and you get really good at nailing the horizon perfectly when you're inverted into a split S and then you go in and you increase your PIDs. What's going to happen is it's going to be more aggressive, quicker, and you're going to over rotate. And so that's where the PIDs can kind of uh, affect rates in, in this weird kind of way. Just understand that there's a relationship between PIDs and rates. And if you get your rates dialed perfectly, but then you change the PIDs down the road, it's going to affect it a little bit. Not a lot. Once you get the stick all the way over into the plastic and the thing catches up and starts to spin at that, whatever that maximum rotational rate that you've set, then the PID loop ain't doing shit because you've got the stick over and the rig is spinning at that same amount and that's zero error, right? Zero error. You're telling it, I want you to spin, in my case, 700 degrees a second. The rig starts spinning 700 degrees a second. Hey man, I'm good. No error here. Well, you pull the stick back to the center, it's still spinning, it has momentum, it's got to go shit, and it's got to spin, it's got to fire up the opposite motors and break down those motors, because you've told it to stop spinning, and it wants to keep spinning, because momentum. Um, so now that's error again, and now, so it happens on both the attack and the release, that's what she said. Um, so it'll happen on both sides, and the same thing can happen if if you're used to doing a full, a full roll, and all of a sudden you're you're over or under rotating and you've changed your pids that's why it's being either more or less aggressive um on that um uh, on the way up and the way down basically on the the spin up or this and the spin down i should say uh good question kevin lucky says you're so cool i don't know about that uh, i work grip on productions as well nice dude it's very fun um I, uh, in with still photography at, at when I, I just sort of got bored with just natural light. Um, I found, uh, David, uh, David hobby, uh, strobist is his, was his website way back when. And he had these series of classes, strobist 101, 102, 103. Um, 
And yeah, I learned to light on his website and just fell in love with lighting. I really wished that I had uh, that I had found that sooner in life. I, I wish like in college, for example, I'd, I'd realized how much fun lighting is because um, I could have had a really cool. I mean, I still can, but um, it's harder when you're older. Uh, I could have had a fun career in lighting because there, there are opportunities for that. More opportunities than FPV, that's for sure. Um, and I, I love it. It's the big thing, right? Uh, yeah, I just kind of fell in love with lighting. And then when I was living in Charleston, uh, a friend that I met through, uh, I got into tabletop board gaming for a while. Um, a friend that I met through there was starting to make short films and didn't have anybody that knew how to light. And it was like perfect. And I started, um, doing, uh, gaffer and, and grip stuff, uh, for her, Michelle Octopunk, uh, Octopunk Media, I think is, is her, I just know it as Octopunk. And, uh, yeah, I worked on a whole bunch. That, that's where my IMDb creds basically came from. And uh, I had a blast doing it, my God. And, and she she actually um, paid me to, to uh, drive back to Charleston for a couple more projects after I moved here to Atlanta. Um, but now I think she's found somebody else to do um, uh, gaff work for, which is great. It, it makes way more sense. And there's there's people that are way, way, way better than I am. I'm, I, I did everything on like a super shoestring budget. So I don't know any of the fancy gear. Um, you know, we, we rent, she rented, um, uh, she rented those big fancy tube light bastards at one point. And I was like, Oh my God, this is, it was super fun, but I, they had a million functions and features that I didn't know how to use. Um, which was annoying, but uh, you know, I, I, yeah, I forget what they're called. It drives me, it drives me insane now, but whatever. JP Gaming says, any news on the MyWheel 6 2024 release date? Can't wait to pull the trigger on that one. No clue. Um, I have not been able to talk to Happy Model since an hour ago when I got access to my Facebook account again. Um, I've been uh, I've been messaging as many people as I can remember that I'd had ongoing conversations with in Messenger uh, on Instagram and explaining like, hey, um, I, blah, 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 got banned, bullshit. Uh, can we please talk here? And none of them have gotten back to me. Like so many people use Facebook Messenger as their primary um, messaging tool. Uh, and that's been one of the things that's been like really stressing me out is that like, A, I lost all these conversations. Uh, but B, you know, these people are using that. I can't tell them like, hey, I need you to use something else, bro. Like, who am I? Right. It, it, it's so, oh, boy. Scary. CMYK says, what's up, Gangly Gang and CIDFPV? What's up, homie? 661 says, just got the newbie doing cockroach frames. I won from you. Awesome. Uh, honestly, I'm not immediately impressed with how they look. Uh, thin motor mounts and special short screws uh, and the post poking the lipo. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I can see how you would feel that way. Build with them and start smashing them into stuff. They're going to hold up better than any other frame. And they're, they're for the, the, for what they weigh, there's nothing else that can touch them. Um, you know, form over function. I'm sorry, function over form, rather, kind of a scenario. Um, yeah, in all of my testing, uh, they're hands down the best. So, yeah, you got to overlook the way that they look and just appreciate the way that they perform, basically. 16-bit of PV says, uh, if I change from two-blade to three-blade props, do I need to change the tune? Maybe if your tune is absolutely on the razor's edge right now and... The, the two blade propellers that you have been running are very well balanced, for example, and the three blades are slightly less balanced, you might need to change the tune. Um, there are a million situations where, different specific situations where you might need to change the tune. Uh, there's a million and a half situations where you probably won't. I Like, namely, if you're not on the razor's edge. If, if your tune is not on the razor's edge right now, you'll be totally fine. Um, so yeah, you should be okay. Uh, but you'll know it if if you need to change the tune, you'll arm it and it'll try to fly away, or you'll you'll uh, quickly increase and decrease the throttle and it'll and the the quad will go wah, wah. it'll have like a little double weird bump, or it'll just it'll tell you it'll it'll tell you that it's unhappy. It'll make weird noises. It'll sound strange. It'll fly funny. Um, but typically, uh, three blades are better balanced than two blades. A three-bladed propeller is easier to balance than a two-bladed propeller, just by its very nature. Um, so yeah, you should be totally fine. Uh, Brad Mond, it's the, the the what I would be more worried about is that the three-bladed prop is heavier, 
and a heavier prop is gonna have a slower response time. So you might want to push the PIDs and increase the PIDs to make up for that slower response time. Um, but you know, that's a flight feel kind of thing. That's not a necessity. So you can cross that bridge when you get to it. 16 bit FPV set. Oh, we got that. Brad Monden says, looking for a motor that runs 2S or motor limit to 3S on two and a half inch props. What would you suggest? Roughly all up 90 grams, uh, freestylish. Oh, Brad, I, I am not great in that little world there. I, I, I'm not the, the toothpick guy. Um, what I'm going to suggest is that you take a look at bind and flies. Try to find a bind and fly that's as close as possible to what you're looking to build. Uh, my guess is that it's a toothpick. I'm not totally sure, but yeah, whatever you're looking to build there, find a bind and fly or two or three bind and flies. Take a look at what size and KV motor they're running and what like what battery voltage they recommend to S3S um, and then reverse engineer it from there. What I'm gonna recommend is that it, your reverse engineering process there is gonna be to run a slightly bigger motor than they are and a slightly higher KV than they are. Most bind and flies are underpowered. And with motor limiting, there's really no reason to do that anymore. We should be putting motors that are higher KV um, on and then just motor limiting down. So for sure, try to find a motor that's higher KV than those bind and flies. Um, but also if you can, like if you're seeing that the bind and flies are the 1002s, get a 1003. Um, or an 1102, you know what I mean? Um, just go slightly bigger because, yeah, the, the binding flies are, are more like beginner oriented. Since we're custom building, we might as well overbuild them a little bit so that we can grow with the, the quad and, and get better with them. Uh, 661 says, just ordered five more Mobula 6 2024 frames and I'm gonna, I'm gonna swap over to those. Uh, I've been really impressed with the with the Mobula 6 2024 frame. Um, not as impressed as I am with the with the Cockroach 65 V3. Um, but yeah, this is quickly becoming my second favorite frame. Um, pretty much on par with the uh, the the Weebleed Crown frame. I, I don't know if I like one over the other yet. Um, I like that the the that this frame is a little bit lighter, um, but. Yeah, I don't know. It, it's I, I'm already starting to see the ducts uh, deform, which the, the also happens to the crown frame. I mean, really, it happens to all the frames other than the Cockroach 65 V3, which is one of the big reasons that that I love that frame so much is that they've just made that by just rolling the corner of the ducts, they've made them so much stronger. Um, but yeah, I mean, if, if you don't mind every like five or six crashes sitting here, and like, all right, let me see if I can get this back round. Okay, let me go into turtle mode. Nope, the propeller's still hitting it. All right, let me try to round it back out. Okay, is that enough? All right, let me go back into the thing. Because you don't want to just push it really hard because that really weakens the plastic. If you don't mind doing that all the time, then the 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 Mobula or the crown frame are totally fine. Um, it bothers the shit out of me. So yeah, that's a big reason that that for me, the Cockroach 65 V3 is, is the best one. Um, uh, bu, bu, bu. Kevin, YouTube just did the thing. and I know I'm very behind, but uh, thanks again to Jackalope FPV for a $5 super chat. He says, please surprise us with a clam man cameo tonight. Uh, this is the best that I can do for you because somebody took ownership of clam man and they are now copy, uh, copyright striking people that play it. Uh, and I do not. Uh, I do not play that game anymore. As a live streamer, um, you can no longer live stream if you get a copy strike. It is guilty until proven innocent. Um, so it it's not something that you mess around with. In the chat, I have just posted a link to Clam Man so you can play it on your side and crank it up as loud as you want. Uh, but yeah, I cannot play Clam Man anymore. It's very sad. I, I, I miss that goofy bastard. Uh, thank you for the uh, super chat, my friend. Much appreciated. Uh, let me try to find my place. Kevin Sumner says, working on the test cameras, why the hell does every manufacturer have a different camera plug standard, you stupid mother effers? <laughs> yeah. It is very annoying. There are three different, uh, three different camera plugs. There's the 
the newbie drone specific one. There's the, and then there's the two JSTs. Really, really dumb. Oh, and then uh, some uh, some manufacturers will put the female side on. Uh, so there's probably actually four or five different plugs that will come on tiny whoop cameras. Six is going to says I'm pl uh, I'm planning on dying the 2024 frames. Uh, you know there there will be some purple, dude. Very cool. Uh, if you want purple, I learned this from Jesse actually from Tiny Whoop. You got to go very blue. If you get purple writ dye and you dye frames, it'll be pink. You got to get purple writ dye and you got to put a whole bunch of blue in. I don't know how much blue. Jesse seems to keep that as his 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 secret. Um, which is fair enough because he spent a ton of time figuring that out. But like, yeah, if you want like, so this is the purple that I've been so impressed with from, from Jesse. Fucking fuck. Oh. Oh. You scumbag. Oh. If you want this purple, it's got a lot of blue in it. It took Jesse a long time to figure out how to get this purple. <sighs> oh, I'm so old. <clears throat> oh. Oh, you dirty hooker. Mafi says, build a walk snail into the cockroach V3. It fits like a glove. The walk snail board squeezes in between the ducts uh, and just barely fits. I trimmed part of the duct to reveal the DVR connector. Um, I'll do you one better, Mafi. Uh, I am going to be figuring out. There is now a... Um, do I have one floating around here? How do I not have one? I don't have a cockroach v3 ducts but the uh v3 frame but oh it's right in front of me uh i'm going to be doing a build where i use the uh the posts on the bottom of the cockroach 65 v3 frames um i don't know which board i'm going to put where uh, i haven't figured that out yet yes i do it's going to be the aio on the bottom and then the walk snail board on the top because the aio is going to have motor plugs on it uh but yeah i'm going to be doing a build with um AIO on top, uh, sorry, AIO on bottom, walk snail board on top, where the walk snail board will sit flat here. It won't be double stacked uh, because Newbie Drone uh, has a uh, 3D printed piece that loops around in here. I think it's actually in, in this box. Come to think of it. Where'd that box go? I think it's in here. Hold on. If I can show you, this will be pretty cool. Uh, is that it? That's it. Yeah, so this is pretty rad. Somebody sent me a link to this the other day. Thank you for that. Ah, oh, this is not the right one. Um, but it, it, it looks like this, and it sneaks in the little battery tray, and then it hangs the battery down low so that you can, uh, you can actually run a, a second board in the bottom there. Um, so yeah, I'm super excited about that. I, I gotta get my hands. This is the wrong one. This is for big ass batteries. Um, I gotta get my hands on the, on the smaller one. And that's pretty cool. That that's super exciting. Uh, that will be what the walk snail 65 freestyle build turns into. Uh, so yeah, that will be cool. Stay tuned for that. I just gotta get, get my hands on that mount. Uh, and then after that, the only thing I need to figure out is how the hell can I get, and I actually messaged Kelvin this uh, on Instagram, but I noticed that he hadn't used his Instagram in years, so I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't get back to me. Um, I just gotta figure out how to get the camera up front, uh, and that'll be like the perfect, uh, the perfect whoop setup, the lightest weight, uh, no ducts in view, kinda dealio. Uh, so yeah, I need to get back to work on figuring out how the hell to get the walk snail light camera up here in a way that it works right. These are the the mob light uh, camera mount things, and they're just the jankiest shit ever. I, I I can't. This is not a real solution. And and the the up tilt, it's it's like a, there's like a million degrees up tilt. This is this is 
This is silly. Maybe this can be adapted. What I'm really hoping for, um, I asked Dax if he could maybe design something to use these little uh, Immortal T hooks that are on here uh, and then run this forwards and just have like a super simple little camera G-string mount here and then I just glop some uh, some E6000 on the, on the little hooks. So it just drops in there and then holds the, the, just a little loop of TPU. Super simple, zero degree up tilt. Um, it looks like it'll it'll need to stick out a little bit. Like when I push this camera all the way flat back, the see how it doesn't line up, right? So it would the mount will need to go diagonally up a little bit. But I think it'll just naturally kind of do that, and it'll sort of just pull the camera back. And what's cool is this part of the frame is flat. So right here, if, if I just pull the camera into this, which is, it looks like that's what that style mount will do, it should sit there at zero degree up tilt. There's a chance it's gonna go down into negative up tilt, which I actually don't hate, because if you, I guess it would be down tilt. If you have down tilt and you're chasing a, a subject, you can actually sit up above them and look down at them. And as you tilt forward, you can damn near look straight down, which is kind of perfect for chasing drift cars, right? Like if you watch uh, Justin Skinner's stuff chasing um, the uh, the rallycross cars, uh, some of the best camera angles he's got and like what the announcers want and what, you know, the, the actual competitors want is to see down because that's where you get to see all the, like the strategy and, and like the, the drift angle and rubbing and banging and shit you know when we chase drift cars at 30 degree up tilt and we drop down on their bumper and shit you can't see what the hell's going on it looks really cool and it's super impressive but like you can't actually see the action that's happening right this is why like mavic's just looking straight down just tracking the action works so well and and that's where a lot of the live flying ends up getting sucked up by is is donkey mavic pilots that just Oh, on the sticks, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. <laughs> Demo FPV says, hey, gangly gang, what's up, dude? Uh, Curtis Hayes says, do we still get giveaways every stream for a frame discount code or do these replace those? Uh, nope, still got lots of discount codes. And since you reminded we, me, we might as well do it right now. Uh, no, let me, let me wait. Let me, when I get caught up on chat, uh, we'll do it. Let me try to go fast through chat. Cause I'm still, I'm over an hour behind. That's absurd. Uh, Ebod's in the house. He says tips for conformal coating your whoop. Uh, it's the same as any other rig. The only thing you want to remember is that the conformal coating, if it gets on anything that needs to have an electrical connection, it won't. So if you get it inside of your USB, you're screwed. If you get it inside of your motor plugs, you're screwed. If you have like a camera plug on there and you get it in there, you're done because it you won't have that connection. So that that's the thing that you want to remember. You got to either like plug up all of those plugs with like a dummy plug or something like that, or just be really careful when you're applying it to not let it get to those plugs. Uh, also, uh, buttons. If, if there's like a bind button, uh matthew connor thank you for the super chat i'll read it in a second um if you've got like a bind button on there don't let it get into that bind button it'll you know a but a button is just two contacts that are separated and you push it and the contacts touch each other so if conformal coding gets in between those contacts they ain't gonna contact anymore i mean they're gonna contact but they're not gonna send electricity back and forth uh, so yeah, that's really it. That, that's really the only tip with conformal coding. Coding is just don't get it where it doesn't belong. Uh, Frank Nicholas says, F "Fact fuck, uh, you get what you pay for. You are their product, and don't forget that Google, Google, YouTube, Instagram are exactly the same. Uh, you are their product. Um, Google, YouTube, yeah, right. Google bought YouTube." Um, Instagram is owned by Meta, uh, which is Facebook, which is, but I have it, um, thank God, uh, I never fully connected Instagram with Facebook. It, it's not really connected at all. Uh, if I had, I would have lost my Instagram as well, and that would have been way, way, way worse uh, than losing my Facebook. Uh, but yeah, Instagram, I, I, I still love Kevin Sumner says, if you've bought ads on Facebook before, I wonder if an email to the FTC might get some traction. 
uh, I can't tell you how many people I read in these uh, I, I read in these Reddit threads uh, that talked to attorneys and the attorneys were like, yeah, no, we ain't fucking with Facebook. Um, so yeah, I don't I don't know if that. Yeah, I'm sure they've. Yeah, too big to fail, yo. Kilo Zebra says Instagram is Facebook too. I wouldn't rely on that. Uh, Frank Nicholas says Facebook is not a monopoly. Uh, uh, you don't have to use them uh, for your online presence. Yeah, I guess they're not a true monopoly, but yeah, when when businesses get too big to fail, bad shit starts happening, right? They start acting like assholes, and and, and it's just maddening cmyk says do you think someone reported you it wouldn't surprise me it, it, it would not surprise me at all there's there's just so many awful people you know and like god forbid anyone say anything that uh remotely goes against the true snowflakes opinions right they're they're very quick to uh um just continue to be garbage uh kevin the alien says i'm mostly just glad your pictures and stuff are still there yeah me too man me too uh, Ramada says, "Na joke, uh, nah, jokes as a small, na jokes as a small growing content creator, you'll become a target. Equals, it's a sign of success. Yeah, it's true. Um, as soon as you have haters, then apparently you've made it. I would rather not." Frank Douglas says, "The web existed before Facebook, uh, and the rest of the web is much bigger. Uh, that's true, very true." Kevin Sumner says, uh, "You can also download all your information from Facebook. Yeah, I did that. They they actually let you do that when you're banned, which is nice." Um, I have no idea how useful that dump is, though. Not very useful at all. As an example, my uh, my Facebook info dump zip file is 11.6 megabytes. <laughs> so I, I didn't even bother to unzip it. <laughs> I was just like, okay, thanks for nothing. Ramadas says the types a thing that I can't really say out loud because the the, the G word makes bad things happen on YouTube. <laughs> Uh, Ebod says going to bed now. Oh, well, sorry, dude. Hopefully you watch this on repeat because I did read your comments and answer them. Stephen Woodruff says tell that reliability thing to Williams. <laughs> William Loesch says still. Uh, Stephen Woodruff is referring to F1. Yeah, it's hard to. Very difficult to make an engine that is as lightweight as those engines are and make the amount of power that those engines make and are packaged as small as those engines are that are reliable. <laughs> William Loesch says, still 100% analog here, hoping to wait out longer for the next generation of DJI. Thoughts on DJI in general? Uh, I've tried a friend's V2s with Vista and loved it. Yeah, it's a hell of a product. Walksnail is even better um, than old school DJI. Uh, the O3 system is, is wild. Uh, I don't personally like it, but uh, I haven't really used it in depth yet, so maybe I'll fall in love with it. I hope I don't because it's it's awful. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff about it that's kind of like, Ooh, I don't know about this. Uh, but yeah, it's all really, really good. Uh, I like waiting. The, the Walksnail Goggles X, I thought they were going to be the end-all be-all. Even with the weird like reliability stuff, they're absolutely not the end-all be-all, um, which is super disappointing. All they really needed to do was build in a module bay, like what um, HD Zero did on their goggles. Uh, so yeah, there is not, unfortunately, a, um, like, this is the perfect time, buy these goggles and you're good to go. I don't know if there ever will be. I mean, Walksnail is not gonna come out with another goggle for a while. Uh, Fat Shark probably isn't either. DJI doesn't give a rat's ass about anybody, so they're not going to incorporate analog into any of their stuff. So it's tough, man. It's uh, I think it's still a situation of like Fat Shark used Fat Shark HD3, HDO, HDO2s for analog, um, and then Walksnail for uh, for digital. That that to me is the best combo. Uh, right now you can get the, the fat shark dominator walk snail goggles for like a stupid price, like 380 bucks or something like that. It's really cheap. Um, yeah. Or maybe you can even find them used for me. It's that's it for me. That's the, that's the combo right there. Uh, Ramada says you, uh, have you been moisture farming? Fun, fun, Kenobi. fun, 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 Kenobi. No moisture farming. Uh, Kevin Sumner says, 
Think I blew up a Happy Model Happy Model 2G4 down to three. Need that Super X to drop already. Yeah. It's sad when one of those Happy Model boards goes. I have two that are on their way out. Uh, TS is more reliable for power outages or other weirdness. Ah, okay. It's designed for broadcasting. That makes sense. That makes sense. I wasn't going to change it off of .ts. Uh, Curtis Hayes says, My Windblows laptop has no issue seeing the SD card uh, and my .ts files. Uh, yeah, I'll... I'll, I'll if if the, the cards are unreadable, I'll, I'll definitely be bitching about it, that's for sure. Freelojo says, Up! Uh, I have to rebuild my accent anyway, so that will make a track car and my 300 is my daily driver. Um, nice, that's great. Yeah, that the 300 would not be a good track car. Uh, a Hyundai Accent is actually a perfect track car. Uh, nice and lightweight. Uh, parts are super available, I'm sure, and really cheap. Um, lightweight is the biggest thing. The, the lighter weight your track car is, the better time you're going to have. It just, your consumables costs go down so much. Um, the trick, the real trick, is to try to find... Um, so, like, for example, you get a first-generation Miata that has tiny little brakes, um, and then you can upgrade to, like, the second-generation Miata brakes, and then you've got a much bigger brake package, but it's still an OEM Mazda product. Um, that's, the, that's the move. Like, you want to try to find a performance version of your car that has bigger, better stuff, and then you can get that shit really cheap. This way you don't have to pay the aftermarket tax, um, and you can get stuff from like wreckers and whatnot and really save money. That That's that's the move. And if you find like, I'm certain that there's a Hyundai, a Hyundai Accent um, Facebook group or 10, um, if you find one with people that are tracking those cars, they will know that shit. They will know all the like really cheap, bigger brake rotors, bigger brake calipers, um, you know, like a, a, a Japanese version of the intake that actually comes on some weird SUV. Uh, yeah, Hondas are like that. Hondas are like Legos. Um, you can, you know, Christ, you can build an all-wheel drive Civic by just pulling apart the, the weird uh, wagon thing that they made and grabbing like the transfer case and the diffs out of that and just dump it into a Civic and have like a nasty all-wheel drive 2,300-pound uh, <laughs> rocket ship. It's, it's really, really cool. Uh, Morton Upshot says you're doing better. You are doing better at being a dad than you think. It's hard work. Uh, thank you, dude. Uh, Maggie tells me that same thing. Um, you know, biggest thing is just to not be an asshole. It's, it's weird, man. Like most of life is just like, oh, just don't be an asshole, and and like you're good to go. Cause there's so many of them out there. <laughs> FPV announcer, what a cool name. Uh, he says, uh, not a failing, I guess, though. I wonder what we were talking about at 1046. Sorry, brother. <laughs> I'm so behind on chat. Uh, maybe we were talking about the meaning of life, possibly. Uh, Matthew Connor says, I have a whoop that will not stay on track when when trying to do a roll or a flip while hovering. What are the steps to fix this? Not stay on track when trying to do a roll or flip when hovering. So you're hovering, and then you try to do a roll or a flip, and it's not staying on track. I'm having a hard time figuring out what not staying on track means. Maybe is air mode off? Are you, like, hammering the throttle to get ready for the roll, and then when you go to zero throttle, it's, like, wobbling around as you try to do the roll? Is that what you mean? If that's the case... Uh, Air mode is off. You need to turn air mode on. If that's not the case, I tag me again and and try to explain it using different words because I can't figure out what you mean by stay on stay on track is is what's throwing me off. Um, Ramadan with another with another comment that if I read the the yeah YouTube will not like <laughs> will ding this live stream so I'll leave it there. Jackalope with a $5 super chat. Thanks again, dude. Uh, Johnny then says, can we get a rant on Miata versus S chassis? Oh God. And they're respected fanboys. Um, I, uh, I would rather rant about drifting versus everyone else. I don't know. 
uh, S chassis are awesome. Uh, unfortunately, they've been ruined by the drift crowd. Um, drift, the the drift crowd are primarily young kids, kids, uh, and kids are just dumb. <laughs> And so in, in the drift world, you get a lot of assholes and, and it's just, and, you know, it, it's just bad news. Um, and the um, as chassis are what most people know as uh, 180 SXs, SX, 180 SX, or um, in Japan, they were called the Nissan Silvias, S, right? So that's an S chassis. Um, 240 SX, 180 SX. Um, S13, S14, S15. Um, it's a phenomenal platform. It's a phenomenal chassis. The, 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 the engine in it is called the SR20. Um, one of the worst sounding engines of all time, but a great four cylinder, two liter four cylinder. Um, so yeah, the S chassis is awesome, but you can't get them anymore. And, and any that you can get are just ruined by drift kids. Um, so yeah, it's a super shame. Miatas aren't far behind, but way, way, way better. Miata is like an, an actual enthusiast car that enthusiasts that aren't children um, drive and maintain and, and don't just annihilate. Plenty of them get annihilated by the kids, um, but nowhere near as many. Um, so, yeah, because mainly because the Miata is a hairdresser's car, right? It's a gay car. And so most of these dumb children wouldn't you know god forbid someone sees you driving a gay car that must mean that you're gay and apparently being gay is a bad thing um so yeah it's it's one of the beautiful things about the miata is that people that own miatas most people that own miatas have no ego because right they like anybody that's worried about worried about that yep yeah, those are the people that uh i i delete from my life immediately right so um it's one of the super 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 cool things about miatas is that the owners um are confident enough in their self that they're getting the car because it's an amazing car arguably the best sports car ever produced rather than getting a car as a status symbol because they want to try to look cool which is just the most insane thing ever um so yeah it's uh both great chassis, but yeah, both great platforms, but S chassis are just, they're just gone. They're just all gone. You can't get them. And if you do manage to find one that's in half decent shape, it'll be $50,000, which is not, they're not worth that. Uh, Veritas Ruza says, dude, where do you get all the, uh, where did you get the Franchisian Monk outfit? Very cool. This is actually a, um, this is a shirt by Element, the, the skateboarding company. This is one of my favorite like long sleeve t-shirts ever got this awesome little hood it's this like super cool brown and it's like it's like it's fitted weird it's like a different fitted shirt it's like skinny for my skinny ass and like yeah i don't know it was my favorite long sleeve t-shirt that i own it's very thin um but it's also like very warm i don't know i love it i don't wear it that often because like i got it 10 years ago and i don't want to ruin it the hood is a little bit weird too the hood that's why it looks like a, a monk shirt because the hood kind of like sits funny. But yeah, this is one of my favorite shirts. Uh, fly high FPVs in the house too. What's up, homie? Thanks for hanging. Kevin Sumner says, uh, for all in tents and porpoises. Veritas right, so Jesus says, Christian monk, the order of the drone. <laughs> I don't know what, what, um, I don't know what friend... Hold on. Francisians. Related. Ah, okay. 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 All right. Fair enough. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's me, brother. <laughs> Ramada says, uh, what are the top rates? A thousand slash I move 720 to 820 after an experience. What are the top rates? Yes. 
I'm not sure what you're asking around with that. Sorry. Uh, tag me again and 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 ask that a little bit differently. I'm, I can't figure it out. Sorry, dude. It's 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 me. It's not you. Veritas just says uh, Mobula Six Eco is HD zero and had and has plugs on the motors. Does it really? Um, that's pretty cool. I love that it has plugs on the motors. Uh, it doesn't have a VTX built in though, so that AI we you know that AI doesn't really do us any good. The Mobula Six Eco seems really cool. Um, I had somebody comment on the last uh, on the last on yesterday's live stream and say um, th basically they don't agree with with the fact that I'm just making assumptions about it and that I need to get one so that I can actually fly it and, and give you guys my opinion. And I replied back and I said, you know, hey, I, I've built I've built whoops with HD zero and I've built and flown whoops that are the same weight with the same uh, size and, and KV motors. Um, so I think that that my assessment is perfectly valid. Am I missing something here? And Quad 66 actually, he replied to me and he said, no, you're not missing anything here. I was like, okay, cool. Um, yeah, I, I, it, it, I, yeah, I don't know. It, it, HD, it, the, the Mobula 6 Eco is not anything magic. It's like, it's, it's very cool that it's really inexpensive. That's the magic part. But in terms of weight and flight performance, it's just a Mobula 6 with HD0. That's all. It's it's not any lighter. It's uh, maybe it'll use a little bit less power. I don't think so, but maybe, I guess. Uh but yeah, there's nothing really magical about it other than the price. Um but I I yeah, I don't I don't have that kind of money to dump on a rig that I'm not going to like the video system. So, yeah, not happening, but um yeah, I don't know. It was weird. I, I, I was a little confused by that. I, I think maybe the person posting that just didn't doesn't quite understand um, that. Like, yeah, I've and I, I thought I explained it yesterday, but maybe they missed that part. Um, but yeah, or maybe they think that there's something different about it. Right. Like um, everybody has made a big deal out of this new HD zero setup. That's but like it's different. But it, for us, it doesn't matter that it's the, the changes don't matter to us. It's not any lighter. It's maybe like a fraction of a gram lighter. Um, yeah, it doesn't like for flight performance, for all of the things that matter to us as pilots, it's no different. Um, so, yeah, it, it it is what it is. Uh, but the price, holy shit, the price is incredible. Uh, 160 bucks is just bananas. So if, if you've got HD zero goggles... Um, you should probably snag one because yeah, you can have a, it's not going to be 160 bucks forever. I'll bet, uh, HD zero whoop equals worth a try. See how you feel and all been there, done that. They're cool, but not as cool as walks now. Off axis FPV said something, but YouTube did the thing and now I don't know what the hell it was. Uh... Curious to your opinion on the newbie drone AIO board, specifically about the IPEX slash UFL connector on the board being poorly soldered, connected to the board. Uh, I have had two with the same issue. Wow. I've been running newbie drone AIO boards forever, and I've not had that issue. Um, lately, I haven't really run many of the newbie drone boards, so maybe that's changed. Maybe like the old boards, it wasn't an issue, and the new boards it is. This is the first I've heard about it, though. Has, has anybody else run into this? Um, a sample size of two is not nothing off axis, but could just be bad luck. Um, anybody else, anybody having that same issue with newbie drone boards? Uh, I can't really speak to it cause I, I've never had that issue. Uh, Denzel is terrible says dab time. Jake FPV says, what's the weight difference on the cockroach versus the crown, uh, slash 2024 Mobula six, uh, cockroach and the crown weigh, uh, exactly the same. Uh, once you've factored in the fact that on the crown you have to run longer motor screws, uh, the Mobula 6 2024 is 0.2 grams lighter. 0.2 grams is not nothing, but for me, I will take a significantly more durable duct design and also a duct that is uh, where the propeller rides around the inside of it more centered over 0.2 grams. Um, I do have a clear Mobula 6 2024 canopy coming uh, that I'm going to swap this one over to once these ducts are so beat up that they're just ruined. And I'm also going to be putting a clear 
uh, old school Mobula 6 canopy on it with a Nano 3. Um, but yeah, I will not be switching over to this frame. There's nothing wrong with this frame, um, but it's not, uh, for me, it's not better than the, the, the Cockroach 65 V3. Uh, Ramadan says, did you bash your knee? No, I smashed my funny bone on the uh, edge of the desk. Kevin Sumner says, I'm re-soldering or re-pinning, oh boy, seven of eight cameras. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, some have pH 1.0, some Molex, Pico Blade, some have pH 0.8. And then there's different pinouts. Oh, yeah, that's right. The different pinouts. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Yo. That's fucking... I've been there, dude. I've I've, I've rewired and repinned a, a plenty of, of lightweight cameras. Oh boy. Jackalope FEV says, uh, now you gotta learn Japanese so you can recite the whole Clamman speech instead. That'd be fun. Mati says, uh, that's uh, that's what I'm saying. Walk snail on top. Uh, you're gonna love how it sits below the duct line. Ah, gotcha, 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 gotcha. Yeah, coming soon, coming soon. Cole Power says, what do you think about the Mobius 6 Eco 2024 supporting 2S? Um, you know, the, the X12 claims that it'll support 2S, and I've heard from a bunch of people that after a few batteries it blows up. Um, I I don't trust any 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 AIO that's 1S and 2S, I don't trust it. The day that an AIO comes out that says it's 1S through 3S compatible, I'm on board for 2S there. Um but yeah, the the the, the Tiny Whoop AIOs have so much shit crammed onto one board. It's a miracle that they work at all. Um, doubling the voltage that you send through them, I can't possibly see a world where that's going to be reliable. Um, so yeah, I have a hard time believing that. I hope it's true. I hope it's totally reliable on 2S. That would be very cool. Um, although, uh, sort of limited usage, 65 millimeter rigs, 2S doesn't, we really don't need 2S. Um, it would be nice to be able to build a 75 millimeter rig with the same AIO that we build all the rest of our rigs with and run 2S on it. That would be pretty cool. But even on the 75 millimeter rigs, I, I still don't know about 2S. We can get plenty of power. Um, eh, that's not true. It, it would be great to be able to run this on 2S. The problem is going to be finding cells that are small enough and don't sag. The the really low, so, you know, I really dig these things on a 1S 450 mAh battery or on a 1S 300 mAh battery. Um, there are no 2S cells that will outperform this and weigh the same. Um, the equivalent for a, 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 so this is one single 450 mAh cell. So for a 2S battery to be the same weight as this, it's going to be a 225 mAh cell. Um, and th the cells that are th thus far, the cells that have been available that are that low of a milliamp do not perform worth a shit. They sag like absolute hell. 300 mAh folded is the first really small, really lightweight, low mAh cell that has had really good performance. Um, so I think 2S has a ways to go. But man, would it be cool if that AIO is um, reliable on 2S because then maybe the battery manufacturers will pay attention to this and figure out what the hell they need to do on uh, to get the smaller than 300 mAh cells to perform decent. Um, uh, Tiny Whoop has a 250 mAh folded cell uh, that it just doesn't perform anywhere near as well as the 300s, um, which is a, a shame. So yeah, that's a, the issue is batteries, unfortunately. Mafi says my walk snail board, beta, uh, my walk snail build, beta FPV board on bottom, rotated walk snail on top. It's a slam build, but very protected. Very cool. I cannot wait to do that. I can't wait to do the top bottom thing. I'm trying to figure that out forever. Matthew Connor with a 499 super chat. Sorry, it took, it took me so long to get there. Uh, my whoop doesn't hold heading when doing a flip or roll from hover, but otherwise it flies fine. Any ideas? Um, so we were talking about this a minute ago. This helps me. It doesn't hold heading when doing a flip or a roll from, but now I'm confused because from hover. So what, I, 
without from hover, what I'm reading is it's holding its heading, and then you blip the throttle, you do a flip or a roll, and it and it comes down and it goes a different direction. That's kind of what I'm reading. Um, and what I'm thinking is it's air mode related. I, th th that's kind of the only thing that would make any sense. Um, you know, when the like the PID loop is running, and so ah, here's the other thing. If that's the deal, I, I don't actually know. I'm 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 reading into this. I'm and I'm assuming some things. If that's the deal, you might be doing it on the transmitter. Believe it or not, when when you when you quickly so when you move the throttle up and down, there's a very common problem where you'll you'll like push into a bunch of yaw. And so before a flip or a roll, you stab the throttle to throw it up in the air so that when you do the flip, it lands in the same spot. You can't just do a flip because it'll crash into the floor, right? So what could be happening is when you're quickly jamming the throttle up, you're yawing, but at the same time, you're starting to roll it. So you're not noticing that you're pushing over into yaw. And then it does the flip. And then when it comes down, it's got that yaw in it. And then it's and it's going to go in, in a different direction. That's super common. Uh, two of... I mean, the main way to fix that is to get good scrub. Um, but, you know, easier said than done. Um, just pay attention. Now, now that you maybe know that's a problem, pay attention to it. And you'll feel it. You'll feel yourself push into the springs. You can certainly help things, though, on your transmitter. Pull your transmitter apart. And what you want is for your throttle stick to be as loose as possible. You want it to hold its position when you're holding this thing vertical, but if you do like that, you want it to fall down. You want it to be nice and loose. This way, when you push upwards, there's as little, like if it's really stiff and you have to push hard upwards, yeah, you're for sure gonna push into yaw because you're putting so much force into the stick that you can easily overcome the yaw springs. Once you have it nice and loose, as long as you're pushing it remotely upwards or pulling it remotely downwards, it's going to be loose enough where it just travels that path rather than going over into yaw. The other thing you can do is stiffen, and this is what I do as well, is stiffen up the yaw springs. My, my springs on yaw are way stronger than my springs on roll because I'm trying to prevent myself from adding yaw in when I really quickly ram the throttle up and down. Um, but yeah, you'll start to feel it. And then you can also kind of adjust your fingers. Like when you pull down, you can just pull straight down with just your index finger. If you pull down with your with your thumb there, a lot of times you'll you'll pull into yaw left. So on the way down, you can use just your index finger, and you can kind of almost and just like kind of push it up with just your thumb. Um, that could be the issue as well. Uh, I don't know what else it could be other than those two things, because the PID loop is fixing all the error, and that's where the stability is coming from. Um, so yeah, hopefully it's one of those two things. Thank you for the super chat, man. I really appreciate the support. It makes a big difference. Uh, Ramada says beta FPV cross with the OVX VTX is my best 65 X yet. Kilo zebra CID FPV equals below 18 grams dry. Um, that's a cool combo. That's a, that's a, uh, a racing setup there and, and the racers love that. So yeah, Eagle FPV says, uh, how did you get banned from Facebook? I refuse to ever use Facebook and gave up a career in the casino industry to protest Facebook. Wow. Um, they claimed that I uploaded content with copyrighted material. I have not uploaded content to Facebook in at least two years, probably closer to four or five years. Um, so yeah, they've obviously got um, some sort of an algorithm running uh, that's not doing a good job. And, and when I was researching the error message that I got for the last three weeks when I tried to log in there on Reddit, there were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of other people that had the same exact story. Like I've used Facebook in the same way for years and years and years. And all of a sudden this just came out of absolute nowhere. And yeah, the, the it's okay for them to, to kick people like that, but they need to have an appeal thing set up and their appeal thing is, is either fully broken or it it's just a hot mess. And so, yeah, it's just bad. Uh, Ramada says hacking equals fun. No, it's not. Run your own server. Sorry, I appreciate the trauma. Hopefully another door opens. Um, hacking is bad. No hacking. Don't do it. Morton Upshot, unless you're hacking the hackers, then it's okay. Morton Upshot says, would you buy the Dominators and $100 worth of antennas or Goggle X and just use the stock they give you? Um, 
I have not really seen much of anything on the Goggles X that would make me want them over the Dominators. I, after all of the weird reliability problems, I stopped giving a shit. And so maybe I missed it, but the Dominators with proper antennas are going to kick the shit out of the Goggles X with the stock antennas. That's for damn sure. Um, so yeah, that, that's, I haven't really dove into the Goggles X. I was so disappointed when I found out that their analog solution is hot shit. Not, sorry, not hot shit, dog shit. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. Very disappointing. Very, very disappointing. Stephen Woodruff says, uh, call me gay all you want. I just want a Miata that isn't three times the original price. Yeah, I mean, that's all fun cars at this point. But apparently they'll they'll be coming back they'll be coming back down sooner than later. So yeah. Uh Matthew Connor says, air mode is on. Basically, when I try to do a flip or a roll from a hover, it sometimes loses orientation and I have to disarm. Uh also when I arm two of the motors spin up. Now we're talking, Matthew. There we go. Okay, so when you say that the quad loses orientation, I think what you're saying is that it falls out of the air. Um, okay, so uh, it sounds like the, the, the you've got FETs that are on their way out. Um, do this. Take those two motors that don't spin up sometimes and switch them with the other motors and see if that behavior follows the motors or it stays on the ESC channels. If that behavior follows the motors, the motors are bad. If that behavior stays in the same spot, your ESC FETs are starting to shit the bed. Um, also, like check your connectors, make sure the connectors aren't loose, make sure they're they're buried in there. You've probably already checked that. Um, uh, also check your battery connector. When, when you do a, a, a flip or a roll, you're asking a bunch of power and you're also jiggling everything about. So if you're if you've got like bad solder joints on your um, on your battery connector, it could just be blacking out. What d does it reset? Does the flight controller reset, um, or does it just fall out of the air? Is do you lose video for a second, or do you have video the whole time? Um, if it resets or you're losing video momentarily, it's potentially a power problem. The the violence of the flipper roll is shaking something loose and you're, and you're losing a split second of, um, of battery power. Uh, there's a bunch more stuff for you to check. Uh, Denzel the terrible says, see PV like San Francisco friends, Franciscans, Franciscans. Ah, okay. Very cool. Franciscans. Couldn't figure out how to pronounce it. So I just moved on to something else. Ramada says, uh, what's the max rates can be? I'm not sure, but I've turned the rates up like absurdly high before um, because I saw somebody else do it. and It was hysterical. It is indeed hysterical. It's unflyable. But I want to say you can put the, the max rotation to like 2,500, um, maybe even farther than that. <laughs> and like it's it's stupid in the goggles, uh, but line of sight, it's hysterical. Um, cause you blip the throttle, you get it nice and high. You blip the throttle nice and high. Do this like a three inch rig outside. It's hysterical. Uh, throw it up in the air really high and then just hammer roll. And it just, it, the first, I'm not going to ruin it. Everybody should go do it. I'm not going to ruin it. I'm not going to spoil the surprise cause it's, it's brilliantly surprising. Um, you should do it. Yeah. Take a rig that you don't care too much about. It, it won't hurt it, but whatever. If you have a rig that you don't love, do it with that one. Um, and turn the roll rates up as high as they'll go. The, the max rotation, the, the max rotational rate as high as it'll go. Just put like nine, 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 nine in there and then hit tab and it'll 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 reduce it down to whatever the maximum number is. Um just do it on roll. You don't need to do it on anything else. It it doesn't matter. Um and yeah, treat it like a like a grenade with the pin pulled, because it's it's unflyable like this. Um actually put uh, uh, make sure that your accelerometer is calibrated and take it off in angle mode um, so that you have some chance. In, in angle mode, it'll be flyable. And then switch it to acro and just ha don't touch roll and just hammer it up into the air and then just <laughs> roll over. And boy, oh boy, do you have a wonderful little surprise coming to you. Everybody should do that. It's great. 
uh, uh, Blaw says, do you have a Fractal 65 with Crown Ducts yet? Uh, I do. I did that uh, pretty early days. Not, uh, I didn't do it when I was prototype testing the Crown frames, but I did it very shortly after. Um, uh, yeah, it's cool. You can mount the Crown Ducts on the bottom of the carbon fiber, and then that actually brings the the uh, the prop line nice and even with the, the inside of the duct. Um, which is really, really cool. I, I, I dig that setup. Um, I gotta be honest. So I, I, I can't wait to get off of those frames and, and get a nice, simple front mounted camera on a regular old plastic frame. It's going to be lighter. Um, it's going to have more efficiency. It's going to have more power. Um, yeah, I can't wait to do that, but we just have to figure, uh, the camera mounting solution out, but I, I gotta, I'm messaging the right people to, that'll hopefully figure it out. It just takes time. Um, Zach says the HD zero eco is going to be way more durable without the MIPI cable. Plus it's 0.44 grams lighter, uh, than the whoop light bundle. Um, yep. The, the 0.44 grams is not nothing. Uh, but the, the difference in picture quality is a thousand times, uh, the, the change. So yeah, 0.44 grams is not nearly enough to convince me to, to go down the HD zero route. Um, I love that it's going to be more durable without the MIPI cable. Um, I have not really hammered the shit out of these walk snail freestyle builds yet um, to see what the durability is like. I've crashed them a bunch in the house and it's been totally fine so far. Um, but this thing is really going to get the shit kicked out of it when I start flying it outside on, on jungle jams, jungle gyms. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, I haven't had much of an issue with, with durability so far. Uh, Curtis Hayes says if it's stiff, if it's stiff, push hard upwards. Good life advice for everyone. Uh, hey, I'm caught up. Holy crap, that took a while. Type uh, period in the chat if you want a chance at winning a Cockroach 65 V3 frame discount code from Newbie Drone. Um, and we'll do a couple of quick giveaways here. Uh, it's a coupon code. You go to Newbie Drone's website. You add whichever version, whichever color of the Cockroach 65 V3 to your cart that you want. You go to coupon codes. You paste this code in, it gives you a $4.99 discount. That's what those frames cost. Um, you'll still have to pay shipping if you only get that. So you might as well fart around on the west, rest of their website uh, and find some other stuff that you want. Because if you find a bunch of stuff you need, then you can get free shipping. And then you can get a fully free Cockroach 65 V3 frame. Uh, I'm going to go to participants. And actually, let me give it another second here. Let's pull up the FPV raffle.pokeyfpv.com. We're going to reset. And all right, that's enough time. Participants, here we go. And the mouse is still being a dick. Oh, come on, you back bastard. There we go. All right, cool. Here we go. Blah! There he is. Uh, Kevin the alien, bottom right. Blah, top right. Kevin's gone. Blah's gone. Mac FPV on the left, hanging in. Wake and Bake just got blown away. Kevin Sumner, bottom right. He's gone. Spontaneous Sportsman. You have won. Congratulations. Uh, here's the deal. You guys need to message me somewhere. All of my contact info is over on www.ciatifpv.com. Uh, Discord, Instagram, uh, uh, email are the three main ones. Uh, you need to message me and say, yo, this is Spontaneous Sportsman from YouTube because that's the only name that I know you by. My first name is this, my last name is that, and my email address is this. Uh, and then I will reply back with your code and away you go. We're going to play again. Let's see who wins this time. <laughs> Uh, Bent FPV, bottom right, he's hanging in. P. Morty just got blown away. Kevin the Alien, bottom left. Jake FPV is gone. Kevin the Alien's gone too. Kilo Zebra off on the left. Blah, top left, he's gone. Ramada on the right. Steven Woodruff on the right. Everybody's gone, but Demo FPV. Congratulations, brother. You have won. If you guys don't message me, you don't get your codes. It's, it's, it's that easy. <laughs> so do it. Message me, yo. All right. Let's do one more. Uh, I'm actually running towards the end of these codes, so I, I'll, I'll start to do them a little bit 
slower instead of five a night. If I keep doing five a night, they'll be gone in like a week. Uh, Ramada top right. Great Scott top right, top right. He's gone. Scotty Scott Ramada wins. Congratulations, my friend. Those are our three winners for tonight. Message me and I'll send you your codes. Friends, first name, last name, email address. All right. We got six batteries to fly and then we're going to shut this down because it is after midnight already. What? Oh. The chat looks so weird with everybody typing periods. It looks like the participant list. Uh, well, all right. Quick, quick, quick. We're going to do a quick poll. Hurry up. Everybody get to your computers. Get Get ready. Uh, which rig do I fly? Uh, mob six, 20, 24. And then look, the rest of these, I'm just going to tell you what, what motors they are. Uh, 0702, 32,000, uh, 0702, 36,000. Uh, what else, what else, what else, what else, what else? Uh, what's this one? Oh, oh, yeah, of course. How could I forget that one? Um, 0702, 40,000. Uh, those are all the options. There we go. All right, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Pulls up. Vote, 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 vote. I'm sure you're all going to vote for the 40,000s. Let's just grab that quad right now. Don't vote for that if you don't want to, but I have a feeling that's when everybody's going to want me to fly because it's it's like trying to contain a hand grenade with the pin pulled uh what do i need i need this i need this oh i might need yeah of course 56 <laughs> percent oh god yeah okay that's what we're flying that's fine that's fine it's not a bad thing i think this is the right module for it all right here we go i'm gonna record this on the uh hd zero googles Maybe we'll do a little 40,000 KV edit, although the basement's kind of a mess right now, but that's okay. Uh, Stephen Woodruff says, looks like the primaries right now. Oh, God. Don't joke about that. It's scary. Uh, yeah, 40,000 KV wins yeah. by a landslide, 55%. All right, cool. End poll. All right, here we go. Here we go. 54%. Look at you go. FPV is not therapy. FPV is fun. Therapy is therapy. Yeah, you know, I, it's great when I'm when I'm doing stuff. I'm not going to dive into more mental health nonsense for you guys. If you know, you know. If you don't know, congratulations. You win. You won the fucking lottery, my friends. <laughs> it's uh, oh boy. I can't imagine. Cannot imagine. Oh, look at these OLED screens. Oh, that's the thing that I forgot. Uh, 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 somebody got back to me about the output that the HDOs uh, send out of the HDMI. Uh, it's like 1280 by 800. It's some awkward output. And the HD and the Elgato HD 60 S Plus does not support that output. So... I will never be able to send the video from these uh, HDOs into directly into the live stream. So I'll have to continue using the little thing that, of course, I need to go fucking unplug for the eight billionth time and replug. And now, like magic, you guys will have the feed. Look at that! Wow. Demo FPV says, you probably answered this before, but uh, is the QX7 bigger than the TX16? Um, it is shorter top to bottom, but it is wider left to right. The big thing about the QX7, though, is that it's it just has some magical, like, distance between the gimbals and the, uh, and the rest of the, yeah, I don't know. Whoa, oh my God, what was that? That was a desync, actually. Oh, this is not set up. Oh, God! Hold the <laughs> Fucking shit! Ah! Wheezy! Oh, my God, I think it went through that gate. I couldn't even see. I kind of closed my eyes a little bit. 
This is absurd. This is just... Oh, God! What was that? What did I even hit? You can just get away with everything. Like, if, if you just go... If you're about to hit something, it doesn't matter what it is, how tall it is, if you just get get to full throttle quick enough, you will not hit it. You might then hit something. But, man, this, this requires maximum concentration. Look how stupid these go. I'm sorry, but these goggles look dumb. Thank God we're not vain. And we realize that Oh! Holy shit! That was unexpected. Good lord, that came at me with a... with a vengeance. Oh my god, easy! Come on now! Oh, I'm in a shoe. I'm in a shoe. I'm in my shoe. Oh god! I was doing pretty good there. Oh my god, I, I don't know what I was thinking. That box isn't usually there, that's what I was thinking. Oh! Ooh! These motors make this basement... Ah! Feel very small. I mean, it is small. This is not that big of a room. This is like apartment-sized, but... Um, these motors are incredibly challenging in here. Where are we at voltage-wise? Yeah, we're getting down there. God, it <laughs> it just generates it generates so much momentum so fast. <laughs> like it goes from one direction to like blasting the other direction in no time. Oh, that's not going to be recoverable, is it? Yay, it is. Oh god. Oh boy. Let me try this little Ah uh, doink. Ah! Uh! This is this new little move I'm trying to figure out. Ah, uh, going in between the wall and the uh and the the lamp. It's really it's a very small gap in there. Like look, the the gap is the size of the the base of the lamp. I could make it easier on myself by pulling the lamp out a little bit, but I know. What fun would that be? Oh, that battery's dead for life. That one's done forever. That's how you ruin a battery, my friends. Son of a bitch. I'm gonna put it right on the charger, but I, yeah, th this battery is. F and this is one of the new ones. Oh boy. These motors should be called the, the battery slayers. Oh, it's at 2.9. Oh, it's ruined. Game over. Sorry about the... Oh, what's the quote from... Uh, oh, and I knocked this little antenna a bit loose. What's the quote from... Uh, Oh, never mind. <laughs> uh, thanks for the fish. Uh, game over. Thanks for the fish. Hitchhiker's Guide. Game over is not the right thing to say there, but thanks for the fish is, is one of my favorite lines from that movie. I want to read that book someday. I haven't read for fun in like 10 years. Who has the time for that? Man, is it magical, though? Staring at a bunch of pieces of paper with letters written on them, hallucinating wildly, making up your own visuals to someone else's story. What an experience living life is. So long, and thanks for the fish. That's it. Thank you, Morton. Oh, here we go. 40 million KV. Uh, this is a shitty old battery, so this is going to fly like ass. Oh, wow, that was... Oh, it's still tumbling. Oh, man, I'm over by the door. 
Oh my god! It's just absurd! It's absolutely outrageous. The- the- just the explosion! We got a new, uh, ceiling fan today. I don't really like it, but Maggie does, so that's all that matters. I don't hate it, but I think it's gonna be- it's like all white, and I think it's gonna be way too much white. Ooh, this battery's done already. Uh, but it's okay. It's fine. If you don't mind, it doesn't matter. Here we go. Uh, it's gigantic and it has eight blades, and I think that's gonna be super cool. So I'm I'm taking the I'm taking the good with the bad. All right, here we go. Man, that battery. Ooh, man, it is still only up to 3.7 volts. This one that I just pulled off is at 3.9. Uh, with these really powerful motors. Um, oh, I got some serious hair in these motors. Uh, with these really powerful motors, you'll notice that, like, you know, like, oh, time to come in and land, and then the battery will bounce back up to, like, 3.9 volts, because the motors are just hitting the battery so hard that uh, you can actually run it down. It's, it's interesting, like, like, you can technically run it down farther than you would think, but in doing so, if you go full throttle when you're running it down like that, you can dump it down below 3 volts and hurt it. Um, so it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's tough. All right, here we go. Battery number three, 40,000 KV motors. So long batteries. Thanks for all the fish. This is a good battery now. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I don't have aggressive rates, guys. Like, my, my rates are slow and cinematic, and yet, <laughs> like, like, it's crazy. This is, oh, ooh, that was a hard hit. Um, if you remember what I was saying before about the relationship between pit, PIDs and rates, this is a perfect example of that. I have very slow rates, and yet, these motors are, are so powerful. And I have the PIDs relatively aggressive that it's it's super reactive. Oh, that was a hot little... Oh, let's do it again! And then crash into the island. Oh, I almost put it in the fucking dog bowl on that one. We were right here, right next to it. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, no! I tried to do that weird upside-down flip thing. That makes no sense. Oh, no, no. Oh, that was another hard hit. Man, this is a fresh build. It's going to be wrecked. Whoa, that was a desync, actually. Oh, nope. That might be a missing propeller. That's either a missing propeller or hair in there. Hold on. You can always figure it out by going into uh, turtle mode. I think that left front propeller has left the chat. Yeah, that's what it looks like, too. It's like firing up on the right rear. Hold on, let me go get it. Lost. Did you guys see it? Did you see where the prop was? I couldn't find it. Did anybody see it? There were little pieces of leaves. It's between the stairs and the basement. <laughs> yeah, no, those are all, uh, there's a whole bunch of little, little leaves over there. That's what you were seeing. That, that, that 
tricked me too. And it was, yeah, left front. So it was the one that I thought it was. Um, these propellers, these propellers are coming off these motors. These motors are making so much thrust that they're pulling propellers off. <laughs> they could also be getting hot, and that could be uh, a part of the issue. But, oh, uh, shit. Luckily, props are cheap. Just like talk, props are cheap. Uh, there we go. There's my little bag of jump fan by blades. All right, what do we want? Uh, right side high. There we go. All right, fresh prop on motor number four. Uh, damage report. McStinky is holding up totally fine. The camera pushed forward a little bit. But that's to be expected with these TPU camera mounts. And I've just pushed it back, and now it's good to go. The durability of these things is absolutely outrageous. This is a uh, cockroach, cockroach 65 V3 frame, and it's fine. It's completely fine. All right, let's fly the rest of this battery in the basement. Whoa, 3.37. Is that 3.87 or 3.37? Hopefully 3.87. Ah, 3.87. We're good. Well, we'll pull it. We'll swap the battery. <laughs> Teddy is mixed stinky. FPV announcer, thanks for hanging out, brother. Thanks for having a cool YouTube name, too. That's what it sounds like when I sneeze. All right, battery number four. Here we go. Let's keep it down here in the basement. Everybody's up there sleeping. Let's not be that guy. Huzzah! Oh my god! Oh shit! I did not need to. What did I just knock over? Oh, the wheat thins. Motor's powerful enough. Oh, I'm inside the the PSVR2 headset. This will be a miracle if I can get this out. Oh my god! It's a miracle. Powerful enough to knock over a wheat thins box with 140 calories. This is a fresh battery, yo. Woo! The velocity. Woo! The goddamn direction changes, though. Oh! No, no, no. Oh! 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 These motors do something that not many motors do with me. They put me into this, like, panic move mode where, like, I'm not plan... Like, it's going so fast that I can't plan where it's going. I just have to, like, try to not die. Oh, you bastard, you. Ooh! Oh, wow, I caught it right before it hit the ground. Oh, God, no. Here we go. Ah! Come on now. All I'm trying to do uh, is the one really hard thing. Whoo, a little skim the ceiling thing there. That was kind of weird. Ah, uh, you can just, you can get so much hang time with these motors because I can just do the quickest little, I'm trying to really exaggerate it by coming in low. Just the quickest little... And then it just, you get it pointed down so you, you show the the upwards momentum. But then you got to get it out. Get, get, like, I really like to let it hang looking down for as long as possible because it's so goddamn cool. Um, and then getting it out is tough. As all of the ladies in our lives know. Oh! No! No! Don't! Don't! No! Stop it! Stop! Yay! Thank you for stopping. Ah! The throttle resolution is so tough on these. Hey, we got out of the coffee table. Look at us go. What? 
Hold on, let me try to tame this beast. Oh god, there's no taming it. There's it's it's untamable. I just want to try to fly under the table. Oh! And I have a bunch of throttle expo in this. Oh wow, that hit something hard. Oh my god! Wow. Wowee. Oh, that was just laziness. I, I just... I couldn't decide what I was doing. Woo! Oh! Ooh! No, no, no. Oh, God, no. Oh, please, no. Can't arm it when it's there, because it blows all this stuff away. <laughs> It's always so tempting, but can't do it. Can't do it. Here we go. 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 Oh! Oh God! The battery. Oh. Okay. Quick! 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 Get it unplugged. Yeah, like that last little throttle blip. That probably pulled the battery down to like one volt. <laughs> Got to be careful of that with these super powerful motors. I'm actually putting that one right on the charger. Just to bring it back up a little bit. All right, two batteries left. Uh, Curtis Hayes says, see if you can do the ultimate power loop. So the the um, the LED uh, Weebleed cube is all the way in the corner. This is going to be the ultimate, ultimate, ultimate power loop right here. Here we go. Oh, yeah, I pulled that battery down too low. It's sitting at like 3.6. Whoa, okay. This battery is extra fresh. Did you see the uh, the os oscillation? Ultimate, ultimate, ultimate power loop. Oh, God! All right. Here we go. The gauntlet has been laid down. Oh, holy shit! Oh, it's ridiculous! It's so silly! Oh my god! <laughs> I can like read a book in the amount of time it flails across the room. Oh, come on now. Here we go. Oh! <laughs> that hit up here. That hit the wood up here. This is the main beam that the house is built on. Nope, 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 nope. Didn't get nearly enough elevation on that one. Oh, it was just off by a little bit. Oh, God, stop it. Leave me. Leave me alone. No, no, no. Oh, <laughs> man, it <laughs> it's going so fast when it comes back here. The problem is I can't get lined up right because that gate's down. No, that was a bad attempt. We'll get it on this one. Oh, come on, you jackass. Oh. We'll get it on this one. There it is. Suck on that, Trebek. Oh! Oh, man. It's hard to get the elevation down. There's just so much goddamn power in, in this little throttle throw. And this is with a shitload of expo. Yeah! Ooh! Ooh! Get you some! Oh, it got me! It got me some! Oh, God! Woo! What do you know about them lightning quick reflexes? Hardly. Oh! Wow, that was cra that was a master crash prevention class right there. Oh, oh, oh rejected. Th this with this gate with this cube all the way in the corner like this. With this cube all the way in the corner like this, rather than out. Usually the center line of this cube is like right. Well, basically, I line the cube up with this, with this circle gate. So usually the cube is, like, the center point is right here. This little, like, this is like a three-foot difference. 
it really matters. Like, I, I can really notice that this battery is pretty low. Let's not nuke another battery on this rig. That's what the, these motors should be called the battery nukers. <laughs> All right, last one, my friends. Oh, the, the AIO popped out of the rear mount thing. I need to change the camera mount on this. I need to get this to a, a, a Mobula 6 mount. This, this McStinky is stupid on here. But I need another Runcam Nano 3 to do that. And I just haven't placed an order for him yet. Oh, maybe I have. Maybe uh, there might be there might be two on the Tiny Whoop order. I placed an order with Tiny Whoop last week. It, it's still not here. I'm like looking forward to it. Jesse was super busy though with the the race in Ohio, so it's all good. But man, it's funny. Like we get so spoiled by orders like delivering within a couple days. As soon as they don't take a couple days, it's like what? <laughs> Kill Zebra says, what props? Uh, 12, 10 by 2. Yep. All right, here we go. Oh, the ultimate power loop with this rig is just crazy. It comes across the room at fucking 7,000 miles an hour. Oh, God, why? This is almost unflyable on a fresh battery. <laughs> like, once the battery chills out a little bit, it becomes way more controllable. But, man... The first, like, 20 seconds are bananas. Oh! Oh, God! Easy, big fella. Oh, that was cool looking. I, it's a shame I didn't land it. Man, you just... You don't have to blip full throttle. You can just like blip uh, a little bit of throttle. Woo! Oh no! Woo -hoo 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 -hoo! Caught it right before it nailed the TV. Oh! Oh no! I tried to like really. I I was getting ultra cheeky on that one. Oh, the little, the little window tap. I gotta be honest. I dig that. Crash prevention, uh, crash recovery is not going to let me really do that very hard, though. Ow, dong! Wow, I hit the cymbal and the bass drum and the guitar, maybe. Musical quads in the house! I wish that big gate was set up. I love flying through that one. Oh, come on now! Don't you do it! Oh! Yeah! No, no, no! Don't you fall behind there. Don't you dare. You stop that. No! Got it. Oh my god, no! I think I get worse. As I fly more, I swear to god, sometimes I feel like I get worse. Ah! It's because I start trying, like, weird stuff. Like, I, I, tr I get more creative as I fly more. And like flying something this this powerful, getting creative is tough. Like you, you kind of have to fly the appro the approved routes, <laughs> if you know what I mean, which I think you do. I wonder. Speaking of getting creative and doing dumb shit, I wonder. Can I hit? Can I hit this gate up here from this? Oh nope. Certainly not with the battery this dead. 3.55, I'll give it like one more try. Through the bottom. Oh. I don't know if the angle really works out. One more try. Maybe two more. Oh, I can totally do it. Man, that angle is tough though. There's like nothing to reference off of or, or line up. It just has to be like free balled. Now, yeah, that, that's that's... Too hard to, to line that up. The ultimate free, the ultimate power loop. Um, I can just line it up by just running a straight line down the that path. And then what also helps is once I've through as I'm pitching back, uh, there's a there's a seam on the ceiling. There's a, a line of of you know the metal bastards in between the uh, uh, between the uh, 
ceiling tiles that I can reference off of. So as I'm pitching back, I know if I'm lined up right or not. If I'm not lined up, I can throw a little bit of roll in either direction to try to correct it. Um, whoo, boy, that is, that is absolutely absurd. Uh, so fun though. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta give this, I gotta give this rig a little bit more love. Uh, I gotta put the proper canopy on it, the proper camera in it that I'm used to. Less up tilt. Um, these motors are nuts. Uh, the other side of these motors that Zotech sent me is going on the, uh, the, the walk snail setup, which will be ridiculous. Uh, but yeah, this is just, I mean, this is super overkill. Like an analog rig really only needs 36 thousands, but God damn, is that a thing to behold 18 point something gram rig on 40,000 KV motors. Come on now. You can't tell me you don't need that in your life. Uh, these motors will be available on Weebly. No, no update as to when, but he's having a big run of them made. Thanks for hanging, friends. Curtis Hayes, two dollar uh, with a two dollar super chat. Thank you, brother. For making me smile watching the power loops. Certainly welcome. Uh, got that. Cool. All caught up. Thanks for hanging, friends. See you guys on Wednesday. Um, have an excellent week. I'm gonna bury my head in the sand, and hopefully it'll come out feeling better. Feeling better already, though, man. Hanging out with you people is uh, the highlight of many of my days. I appreciate that. Uh, be good. See, uh, CIDFPV.com. Support me over there. Click the buttons. <laughs> What's exciting for me? 45 seconds of your life. Yeah, right. Uh, I'll give you something to watch on the way out here. Uh, this, was the, uh, this was the little meet that I did here in Atlanta uh, in 2021, right before... Uh, this is the same from the uh, beginning of the live stream. Uh, before we saw Flow State in the theater, which is pretty cool. Enjoy. Be good, friends. I'm not ready. Now I'm ready. Bye-bye. <laughs>